Good job, was good job, was good job. What's great? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Can the Brothers Get a Rap podcast. We back with episode 44. Oh my God. I'm your host, Ashley Love Child, and I'm joined with my brother from another mother, the other host of the show. Blood couldn't make us any closer, one of the best photographers in the world. Santana, say something to the people. What's good, what's good, what's good? Y'all already know we got a jam-packed show as always. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get right to it, hit you with this shit, and you know what I'm saying? Y'all going to love it, you heard? You already know. Let's get it. My nigga uh, harmonizing over there, hitting them high notes. Chill, right? chill, 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 chill. <laughs> I mean, chill, chill, you know what I'm saying? Got my, you know what I'm saying? Got my notes. Y'all already know how I do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, first and foremost, uh, shout out to the UFL League, the new UFL League, where they combine the XFL and the USFL, and they combine it in all into one league. Um, and it's called the UFL. It's in full swing this weekend. Was amazing games. I predict all the games. I got all the games right. I don't want to tell y'all my formula on what, on how I predict it who was going to win and why they was going to win. You know what I'm saying? I can say that with my brother off camera, but y'all got to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, shout, word. Out, shout out to the chat. Y'all in here early and thick. Pause. And you know what I'm saying? But shout out to the UFL. Get things in full swing. They still missing my favorite team. They haven't added my favorite team, which is the the um the Seattle Sea Dragons. They had the most fire uniforms, helmets. They need to bring them back next year. You know what I'm saying? They added two more teams next year. Seattle Sea 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 Dragons better be one of those teams. That's all I gotta say. Right. So I play with the Sea Dragons. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Let's get it popping. You know what I'm saying? So of course, let's get into popular opinions. This segment is brought to you by OUV Records, where the motto is create, document, and inspire. You could tap into the to the label uh, Instagram right now at OUV Records. And again, tap into the latest music and also the latest merchandise and all the what's happening. So make sure y'all tap in. All right, first question of the night. Best TV theme song on this list. All right. And y'all, don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that like button. Make sure y'all hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe. And of course, you already know we love that interaction. You know what I'm saying? It helps with the show. All right, so best TV theme song on this list. Number one, A uh, Different Strokes. Uh, number two, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Number three, Golden Girls. Four, Hanging with Mr. Cooper season one. Oh, off rip! It's fresh, Prince, fresh Prince of Bel Air for me. How did I know you was gonna say that? Oh, you know son, that's and I didn't even know until years later that that was an actual song. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I just thought it was a song for for the show, but it was an actual real song. So you know what I'm saying? So that was a good tidbit to find out years later and shit. But nah, Fresh Prince of Bel Air was classic. When you actually seen the whole, because remember they 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 had shortened it after a while. But when you actually yeah. seen the whole uh intro the shit was ill the part where he on the plane and yeah. first class and shit yeah. you know what i'm saying that shit was dope and shit so yeah mm -hmm. nah definitely mm -hmm. fresh prince of bel -Air for me is top tier you know what i'm saying okay okay well they definitely going with uh they going with uh oh yeah my bad y'all happy easter if i didn't say it already happy easter me and my brother we don't even believe in these holidays to be honest with you but i eat the special easter show so happy easter to those who do Follow these fake holidays. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my brother said Fresh Prince of Bel Air. They said Fresh Prince of Bel Air in the chat. Um, shout out to Rowan Twelve in the building. Of course, Rowan Jack. You know, a couple of day ones already in the building. Um, so yeah, so both of y'all. Well, the chat went with uh, with Fresh Prince. You will win Fresh Prince. Me personally, I'm going with Golden Girls. I'm going with Golden Girls. You know what I'm saying? I'm going with Golden Girls, hands down for me. Me personally, you know what I'm saying? Because when I was a little, a little youngin, and Golden Girls is on, the best part of Golden Girls was the theme music, bro. I ain't care nothing about what, 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 what none of them was going through 
their, their old woman problems. I, I don't care about none of that. You know what I'm saying? All I care about was the song. The song, the theme music was popping. Like, I know that's <laughs> like word for word right now, bro. In 2024, I know that theme music word for word. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna have to go with Golden Girls. I would have went with I would have went with hanging with Mr. Cooper though, but they only had that theme song for one season, bro. Oh, and they switched it up afterwards. Yeah, they switched it up because they 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 changed the format of the show because hanging with Mr. Cooper was supposed to be like kind of not only say Martin, but it was supposed to be grown. You know what I'm saying? Because you had adults mm -hmm. on that show. Then of course when they you know took off uh, Jennifer Lewis. And they brought on Raven Simone and her mother and then Tyler. Then they made it more kid friendly. So they, you know, changed the theme of the, you know, theme. Like it wasn't so sexy. The first season you had in Vogue in their cotton dress, um, cocktail dress, you know what I'm saying? Singing all sweet nothing, carrying Mark Cooper and all that. You know what I'm saying? So if they mm -hmm. were that season of that first season, in the sense of the theme song, I would have went with Hanging Mr. Cooper. But I got to go with Golden Girls, hands down. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, uh, but the rest of the world, they went with Fresh Prince of Bel Air at 34%. Not mad at that. You know what I'm saying? Not bad. Close. It was mm -hmm. close. But, but again, I wouldn't have been mad at none of these songs. I mean, none of these theme music being the one of them. So, you know what I'm saying? These, this is the top tier upper echelon jump of theme songs of shows. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it, it, is there any, any theme, any show that have a theme? intro that's honorable mention that's not on this list mm, honorable mention smart guy smart so, guy had a dope what season what season because you remember they, um i remember the, yeah because you remember in the beginning they had like the the nickelodeon type vibe and then they had the hip-hop jump I don't know what season it was, and definitely the hip hop jump. Okay. Um, Smart guy had a dope, um, dope one. Eve had a dope. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The show was dope. Garbage. Show was garbage, but that theme, the theme jump. It was. I had a couple of. I had a couple of chuckles. You know what I'm saying? Couple, I, I, I give it a little, couple. Little chuckles here and there. Um, who else had a dope? Of course, classic. Um, Family Man. You know what I'm saying? Facts, facts, facts. Kind of kind of dope. Oh, I'm not. And then to add again, not to not no no front. Full House was I right too. Full House. Yeah, was right. yeah, you're right. You're right, Full bro. Full House was I. Right. You're right. I'm definitely. I definitely agree with that. Full House definitely had the. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm gonna give you an honorable mention. Some of y'all may not agree, but. Boy Meets World was kind of classic, bro. Just, oh, snap. Now, nah, nah, Boy Meets World was, yeah, that should, yeah, that's a fact. You know what I'm saying? That's I just got, fact, you know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, we got Madrid in the building. Shout out. Yo, sh roll, roll me on, on Key, Key, Key Bar. Shout out, uh, Madrid. Madrid, you already know. You already know. Make sure you hit that like button while you in here. Hit that subscribe button. We love the love. You know what I'm saying? And make sure you interact while you in here as well. So that's what's up. All right. So moving on. Next question. Best 20 minutes. No. Best first 20 minutes in a movie on this list. Again, remember the question, y'all. Best first 20 minutes of a movie on this list, all right? Number one, The Dawn of the Apes. Number mm -hmm. two, Transformers 2. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the Rise of the Fallen. Mm -hmm. uh, number three, Batman the Dark Knight. Number four, Avengers Infinity Wars. He said John Wick 4. I, I've never seen John Wick 4. But that's not on the list, though. Um, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Batman Dark Knight, son. That shit was ill, son. That plane, that plane heist? Mm-hmm. That shit was fire, son. I thought I thought the bank heist, well, the bank heist was the first 20 minutes, right? With the Joker. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking about the one with Bane. Oh, yeah, yeah, nah, but yeah, no, nah, that shit was fire, too. 
That shit was fire. I'm still going with that. I had it confused. So you go with the Joker, the bank, the bank heist. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. All right, bet. All right, so you go on with that one. I want to say the Dawn of the Apes, bro. I really want to say Dawn of the Apes because Dawn of the Apes, like, dude, they was the, the close up, or they was in the jungle, just like, you know what I mean? And you didn't know what was going on. Then they panned it out. Then it wasn't just Caesar, it was the whole squad. And they mm-hmm. ended up looking for food, you know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, the little, the little youngins, they get away from the squad and they want to freestyle. And then, you know what I'm saying, one of them will get popped, you know what I'm saying? And the way they squatted up when 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 the youngins called for the for the for the for the rest of the team. And the rest they of the gang gang. Yeah, yo, the gang gang came through, kid. Like the, the way they swore, kid, it was like, yo. You feel me? Like that yeah. first twenty minutes was, was was clutch. You know what I'm saying? But I'm gonna have to go with Infinity War's first twenty minutes, cause as soon as we turn the movie on, you all you see is Thanos giving a bebop to 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 the Hulk. You know what I'm saying? And then mm-hmm. the Hulk. You know what I'm saying? Going back to coming coming here with the foolishness. Got to come to the Earth with the foolishness. So my Thanos was coming. Like, and he ain't want no more smoke. And then before you knew it, Thanos crew then pulled up to New York City like, yo, we came for the, you know what I'm saying? We came for the. Yeah, he said he sent his side niggas like, yo, go handle that for me real quick. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Light work. You know what I'm saying? Take care of my light work real quick. You know what I'm saying? So that first 20 minutes was, you know what I'm saying? Even Dr. Strange was like, Thanos, who, who's a Thanos? You know what I'm saying? So I got to go with Infinity Wars. The rest of the world, what they saying in the chat? The chat went with Dark Knight. Chat went with Dark Knight. I'm saying uh, Batman Begins, but that Batman Begins was dope. And the Rise of the Planet of the Apes was the best. I think so, too. I think so, too. But I got to go with Avengers Infinity Wars. Us uh, mixed in the chat. The rest of the world, they went with Infinity Wars at 44%. So, you know, I can't be mad at none of these. All four of these movies was top tier first 20 minutes of the yeah. movie. You know what I'm saying? So I you can't be mad at that. All right, moving on. Next question. Best hip hop album in 2011 on this list. Number one, Killer Mike Pledge. Number two, uh MMG Self Made Volume One. Number number three, Kanye West Jay Z Watch the Throne. Number four, Drake Take Care. Kanye West and Jay Z. Kanye, uh, why you going with Kanye and Jay? Gotta go with Jay Z. It's never, it's, it's a no brainer. You know what I'm saying? Kanye was on his Kanye shits, and Watch the Throne was a fire album. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm not a, I'm not a, um, I'm not a Drake fan. Definitely not a Killer Mike fan. So nah. Mm-hmm. So definitely Kanye West and, and Jay Z for me. Mm-hmm. Yo, that album was fire. That oldest joint is fire. That watch the throne joint is fire. Um, but me personally, I ain't gonna hold you. When that MMG self-made album came out, you know what I'm saying? This is the this is the basically the birth of you know of Rick Ross, what we know of Meek Mill, you know, uh uh uh, uh the other brother from Baltimore, um Wale, and then they had mm-hmm. another from Ohio, I can't remember his name, but he was I right, though. You know what I'm saying? And Come on, Stally or some shit. Stally, Stally, Stally. Yeah, he was I. Right. I don't know he what happened. Right. Like, yeah, he was I. Right. So I, I gotta go with the Maybach Music Crew. You know what I'm saying for this um particular list. The rest of the world, what they went with in the chat. Come on, y'all. They, they say P Diddy. Come on, y'all. <laughs> y'all play it, man. Stop playing. Nah, y'all play it. I right, so they went with uh, I, you know I again you went with Watch the Throne, I'm going with MMG. The rest of the world went with Watch the Throne. Kanye West, Jay Z at thirty three percent. Can be mad, can be bad. Uh, the what um M- Maybach music was fire too. Can't front <laughs> that. That was a dope album. Can't front on that one. You know what I'm saying? But Watch the Throne was just just it's just too many hits on that joint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, facts, facts. That's a fact. And because 
And and on that on this list, I was bumping Watch the Throne, but I can't front because of the different styles. I was really bumping that Maybach music at that time. I'm not gonna hold you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you know what I mean. So, but still a dope list. Still a dope list, y'all. All right. So next question. This is a New York City question. Anybody, anybody that grew up in New York City area, maybe this this might be for you if you never if you didn't grow up in a New York City area somewhere in the late nineties, two thousands. All right, after school, best meal after school. So this is like June. This is like elementary, junior high. You know what I'm saying? All right. So best after school meal number one. A hero with the 50 cent tropical fantasy soda. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Pink strawberry if you want to be, you know what I'm saying, decisive. You feel me? Number two, four wings and french fries. Feel me? Number three, two slices of pizza and a mystic soda. Number four, the snack special. Beef patty with 50 cent chocolate, two chips, two quarter waters. I'm going with the I'm going with the 350 meal, the two slices and the and the fountain and the mystic joint. You know what I'm saying? That's a good meal though, you feel me? It hit it with a little bit of uh garlic, um, uh, with a little bit of garlic on the joint, a little bit of pepper. Bro, them two slices. yo, 350, son, back in the day. You get two slices and a drink, nigga, and a bev. You can't go wrong, son. That was the best after school special. We had a lit pizza spot by by my elementary school and shit. Three fifty, kid. Gino was in the back flipping the pies. You know what I'm saying? Throwing the pies in the end. Not, oh, not Gino. Gino in the back hooking it up, son. He was there religiously, son. Yo, eating good. Had a five dollars, you know, you get your change back, dollar fifty, then hit the corner store later on. Came back home, you had a good nap, son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good nap. I'm going with the the two slice and the mystic jump. They in the chat, they're going with the four wings and french fries. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm gonna have to go with the chat. That four wings and french fries, and they and they put that ketchup, well, the, the Chinese food version, version. of the ketchup. Yeah. And hot sauce mixed in one, and then by the time you got home and you opened it, or you or you opened it on the wall, <sighs> bro, that steam coming out. You know what I'm saying? Pure adulation, bro. Just <sighs> so me personally, I'm going with the four wings French fries. They went with that in the chat. My brother went with two slices, two slices. And the Mystic Soda, the rest of the world. Damn, nobody went with the snack special. Beef patty with the 50 cent chocolate, two chips, two quarter waters. That's crazy. All right. But the rest of the world, they went with two slices of pizza and a Mystic at 41%. Uh, classic, son. That was just... I'm a pizza man, so I'm always going to go for <laughs> a slice of pizza no, no matter what. Huh? But you, you, know got the, you got the Mystic in there, though. You know what I'm saying? That's... I'll put Echelon top ten. You know what I'm yo, saying? The, the, yo, Mystic, Please. and it was it was the it was the Kiwi Strawberry Mystic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For me, it couldn't be nothing else but the Kiwi Strawberry, son. I gotta go with the Cherry Mystic. Me personally, bro, that Cherry Mystic hit something different for me. You know what I mean? But I feel you though. You know what I mean? So yeah, so I think that was that was that was dope. All forties was a good time. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was definitely, definitely times I hit the the four the four wings and fries. You know what I'm saying? But because it's elementary school, the pizza shop was right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, back, back. If it was high school, then yeah, the Chinese spot was right there. Then yeah, yeah. I would have went with that one. But you know what I'm saying? Elementary school, that's where you know what I'm saying. We all went. You had that little jumps right there. You know what I'm saying? Like yo, let's get a pizza. Ah uh, ah, uh, that was huh. just the wave, son. Huh? Roman twelve, you better stop, man. He's saying, "Hey, yo, P did he low key the the uh the the John Wick?" You better stop, man. <laughs> man yo, leave that man alone, son. They ain't you know what I'm saying he he chilling right now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, back A whole in the bunch of allegations. Back in the day, four wings and fries 
you came home not able to eat your mama's dinner. Yo, that is a fact. You didn't want you after you done had the four wings and french fries. Don't don't let your mother tell you she cooked. Cause it's like, man, I ain't even interested in whatever you made. You know what I'm saying? So that yo, that's very real. Very real. Damn. That took me back right there. All right, moving on. Next question. Sports. We're gonna go into sports. Best wide receiver on this list. Best oh, wide receiver. Crazy. Man, oh, my said, God. Did he ate did he ate a meat meal? <laughs> yo. That is funny, son. Craven, Craven man. Moorhead. Paul. Hey. That's funny, son. Yo, Craven Moorhead is funny. That's that's a funny name. If you if you if you hear the name Craven Moorhead, you're a you know, <laughs> guy. That's funny. And he said Diddy Diddy ate a, a meat meal. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. These yo, these Diddy these Diddy jokes and memes. Yo, they keep cooking them. You know what I'm saying? And we we gonna get. I'll bet you throughout this show, we are gonna get crazy Diddy Meek Mill jokes throughout this show. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. I know for a fact it's coming throughout the show. Which is about to say? No, no, no. I'm waiting for it. I'm all for it, son. Cause I I I, I know they coming. I know they cooking them. They got their best ones coming. Shout out to Ace in the building. Ace Cher Boogie. Cherry Mystics was the 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 bit more ballroom special. Yo, I'm telling you, that Cherry Mystic used to hit something. Di See, a Mystic used to have you feeling all good inside about your life, like so to mix that to mix that with the with the two pizzas. And, that's then, and we talking about we talking about Mystic before Snapple was even a thing. A the Mystic yeah. was was the thing. You know what I'm saying? Facts. Snapple wasn't even around yet, and they just swooped in and took all the flavors, kid. Pause. You know what I'm saying? And just, <laughs> what the fuck is a Snapple, son? That and is. came that. through and just violated, son. Yo, that's a fact. Uh, Raleigh Reed is craving more head. Y'all feel me? <laughs> yo, y'all yo, y'all crazy, yo. Memes are the art of our time. They are either good or cringy. That is a fact, Rowan Jack. That is really good or is very cringy. That is a fact. All right, moving on. Best wide receiver in the NFL on this list, y'all. So don't name anybody that's not on this list. This list is named purposely, all right? Number one, Calvin Johnson. Number two, Tim Brown. Number three, Sterling Sharp. Not Shannon, Sterling. Sterling is the older brother, Shannon Sharp. And number four, Mike Evans. Damn. Oof. This is a tough list, though. That's a tough list. But you got longevity. You got dominance. You got somebody that was super special, but career was kind of... Cut okay. down, mm -hmm. and then you got somebody on this list who was just—he's—he's he's a little of everything. So that's a tough I'm list. Gonna, I'm gonna have to go with Mike Evans because quietly, nigga, be putting up at least a good thousand yards a season, son. Mike Evans, yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. They go Very on Mike quietly, son. or Tim Brown. Uh, Jerry Rice, come on. We we can't put Jerry Rice on every list because we know who we're going to say. We can't put, you know, we can't put Randy and we can't put Terrell. These guys can't be on the list all the time because more than likely we're going to say those people. So we got to go. This list, this list is kind of like nonchalant because it's like we got one nigga still in the league or Rest of the niggas like out the league, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, ah, you feel well, me? Like if more people like if it was like more congruent on the fact that like they name people like that's not on the league, but they put in work while they was in the league, or they just put people that's on the list that's still in the league today. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, but well, tell me, there's a person that's still on this list, but if his career was the end today, well, I mean, Mike Evans, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna still go with Mike Evans because. Quiet is kept. He putting up a thousand yards a season, son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's 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 what I'm saying. Very quietly, and the league don't even be acknowledging that. You know what I'm saying? That's very true. 
Very true. That's very, he's been very consistent, I must say. But overall, I'm going to have to go with, with Sterling Sharp. Even though he only played, I believe, six to seven seasons, he won the Triple Crown, I believe, three times. Where he had the most yards, he had the most receptions, and he had the most touchdown, touchdowns in the lead with Jerry Rice, Tim Brown, you know, uh, Michael Irvin, you know, all the upper echelon guys of that time. Me personally, I'm going to say Sterling Sharp overall. Um, and, and, and then I probably would have went with Tim Brown because Tim Brown had a long career pause. Uh, his stats is, is phenomenal as well. And then with the stuff that he used to do, man, I mean, if I, who I, I would rather have on my team as a receiver, me personally, I go with Tim Brown. He's faster. He runs better routes. He has uh, short hands. But uh, but Mike Evans, and you know, he – but I, but again, it, 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 at their prime, in their prime, are you taking Mike Evans over Calvin Johnson? I don't think so. So I'm going to go with Calvin Johnson, but right. Mike Evans is still producing at a high level. You know what I'm saying? Fact. This is that Razan ball. <laughs> like, yo, niggas is wilding on the chat. <laughs> Mike Evans was looking like Roseanne Ball can't lie. <laughs> that is a fact. That is a fact, Craig. Yeah, that is a fact. Barry Sanders. Yeah, Barry Sanders was a running back. He was a running back. Talking about the rock wide receivers. All right, so the chat is, is mixed up as far as, like, who they want. I'm seeing some Mike Evans. I'm seeing some Tim Browns. Um, My brother went with uh Mike Evans. I'm going with uh Sterling Sharp, the rest of the world. Went with Calvin Johnson at 36%. Can't be mad at that either. Calvin was a beast. Yeah, he was. It's just mad that his career ended so, you know what I'm saying? But, well, it, it, it didn't even that it ended. He, ch he chose to walk away. Yeah, his body was, was not, you know what I'm saying, not where it wanted to be because he had a conversation where he didn't have no more cartilage in his ankles type shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was like bo his bones just rubbing together. Pause. You know, like when you got top, like he's like the third player that was like the best player on the Detroit Lions that chose just to walk away from the game. Where well, you have Barry Sanders, you got um, you got Calvin Johnson. They just like you know what, man, I, I made my mark. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool. Yeah, but you got more bread on the table. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. So it's, it's like. I've after a while, it's like you on a losing team, son. <laughs> and and Detroit though, yo, Detroit, I, I respect Detroit's hustle when it comes to their franchise. They like, yo, you want the contract, B. So we not obligated to trade you. You feel me? Like I understand, like you, you're trying to get your dollars up, so you think we're gonna wave you, trade you, or whatever th you thought we was gonna happen, but you're not going nowhere, B. So if you're gonna play this game called football, you're gonna suit up for the Detroit Lions. So I respect their hustle on that. I can't front. So, but yeah, you know what I mean. All right. So moving on, moving on. Wait, what? What? what oh, you said Calvin Johnson. All right. Yes, yeah, so Cal thirty-six percent mm -hmm. Calvin Johnson. Uh, I'm a New York uh, Jets. Wait, Jets fan. I'm guessing. Uh, so we know we ain't winning no Super Bowl. Yeah, y'all not winning no Super Bowl. It's mainly because the Jets is a trash ass uh, organization from the front office. If they had a good front office, then the Jets will be in contention of winning Super Bowls every year because New York is a destination that free agents want to come to. But it's a trash-ass organization, and they don't care about being trash. They sell merchandise. People still going to show up. Y'all still going to believe. So why really go for a championship? Why would they do it? Mm -hmm. you know? They're still getting them bills paid, you know what I'm saying? And, and if y'all notice, they do the same format, right? In the 90s, in the early 2000s, they get a pass, their prime quarterback, and Vinny Testaverde, right? Mm -hmm. Then they try to, try to go young, and they, they're all their young quarterbacks, all their young quarterbacks are asked because they don't know how to develop, so they go get Brett Favre, pass his prime. Then you see what happened with Rodgers. It's the same thing each it don't work. 
it's a trash ass organization, y'all. So I feel for y'all Jet fans. I really do. I really do. Shout out to Eastside Harold. Go Texans. Yeah, Texans is a problem. Texas would have been more of a problem if they was able to get Saquon, but it is what it is. Uh, Derek Jeter walked away from MLB. The game too soon. That man was cooking last season. But I believe, but Derek Jeter played, what, 18 years? He played for a minute. He played for a minute. I don't know if I would say that's too soon, bro. Like, I'm Barry Sanders left after eight years, and, 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 uh, and Calvin Johnson left after seven. That's that's quick. I think I, I could have sworn Derek Jeter put in at least like a good 15 years. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Uh Santana, have you shaved your beard? Uh our front Not office. That. Our front office is moving like like Doofy from Scary Movie. That's a fact. That's that's, that's a fact. Horrible front office, man. If you one of one of well, my brother, he, he you know, he, he messed with the Jets and the Giants. You know what I'm saying? But I got a, another friend that's a diehard Jet fan. And every year he tries to convince me that y'all winning the Super Bowl. He's not even saying, yo, we're going to win a few games. We're going to get better. He dead be giving me like, like two-hour conversations and be trying to convince me why the Jets is going to win the Super Bowl. Because before then, the, the, the trash quarterback y'all got, he was supposed to be the new Mahomes. When he first got there, he was like, yo, he the new Mahomes. I'm like, yo, he's dookie, bro. His, his competition, level competition was garbage in college. And he just wouldn't believe me, man. And he's dookie. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is. So she got that. Seems like it reminds me of childhood memories. Uh, shout out to Du Puka. Was fresh as the blue light. Take a fresh, sweet child. Oh my, my guns and roses. Uh, red flags when anyone asks you, do you party party? That's a fact. That's a fact. If, especially if another dude asks you, yo, do you party party? Just punch him in the face, yo. If you're not down with it, just punch him in the face. Don't, don't, don't sugarcoat nothing. You know what I'm saying? Don't even ask no questions. Ask no questions. You know what I'm saying? All right, moving, y'all, moving on, y'all. Moving on. We're moving on to Hollywood Need to Ask Us segment. We came up with this segment because there's a lot of trash ass movies and trash ass movies out, and Hollywood just coming up with any old thing, and they need to ask us, the public, what we want to see. You want to start off? So last week I had a, a Hollywood Need to Ask Us moment for a video game. I'm going to mm-hmm. continue that again. So Hollywood Need to Make a real live action movie of Metal Gear Solid. I need to see that movie. Like that game is fire, still legend. And you know, all the series that they came out with was fucking loaded with all types of shit on there. It's one of the best games that you can play. I'd love to see a movie about Metal Gear Solid, son. You know what I'm saying? That game is lit. Hollywood, make that shit happen, son. Stop playing, yo. Know? Y'all mm-hmm. got Sonic the Hedgehog. Y'all could definitely make Metal Gear Solid, son. Y'all got too much, too much. Uh, uh, um, it got too much lore out there for you not to make that movie. You know what I'm saying y'all got um, y'all already made a series for uh, what's that? Halo. So back, back. You know what I'm saying so. Metal Gear Solid should be on the on, next on the list. You know what I'm saying make that happen. You know what I'm saying. That's my that's my Hollywood needs to ask me. Make a Metal Gear Solid uh movie. Facts. Facts. That would be dope. That would be dope. I right, for me, y'all, I'ma have to say, hold on. Oh, uh, we get the right Metal Gear Solid. Uh nah, that should they should make a P. Diddy movie on how he was able to risk these rappers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wanna see that. I don't, I don't see that. that either. You know what I'm saying? Did you hear the audio, the supposed audio with him and Meek Mill? Great mm. nasty work, bro. Uh, Battle of Anthens, TN movie, uh, Hollywood, uh, moving like Harvey Weinstein right now. They've been moving like Harvey Weinstein. All right, so that that was a that was a good idea. Uh, me personally. I want to see the creation of social media in the movie. 
Mm-hmm. I want to see a creation of social media going into the creation of YouTube. They can even make this a series. I would love to see that in a movie or a series, a theatrical movie or a series, how they went from, you know, us, you know, being how we was and then going into having social media when you had, you know, going into the Black Planet days, the origins of Facebook, the origins of, of, of MySpace, Twitter, but as a movie though, you know what I mean? And and then of course going into YouTube, the, the very platform that we use. And which is so funny that how long has YouTube been out? Has it been 20 years? It's gonna be 20 years next year. Cause it came, I believe it came out in 05. Right when we went to right when we was in Nassau. So so imagine that in high school, YouTube wasn't even around. And then that first version of YouTube, those videos are completely different because if you try to look those videos up, they very pixel, the the formats are different. So I would love to see a movie that's the creation of nah, what, what we are. We, we lived through them shits. Because my boy, my no, it was my junior year going into my senior year because he was a senior. So we was in the same French class. So Buddy was telling me, he's like, yo, bro, you need to holler, you need to get on Black Planet. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Black Planet? What the fuck is that? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm telling you something, Black Planet lit. But I ain't getting too into Black Planet because we was ripping and running the streets. So, you know what I'm saying? I was getting love in these streets. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. But I ain't get on Black Planet until we, until we went to Mooresville. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's when we was like literally like using laptops. Because remember, they gave us laptops and shit. Mm-hmm. So that's the, the first time I actually started using the internet, not for research purposes, not for schoolwork. You know what I'm saying? For like fun. Because before then, at Quiet is Kept, the uh chat may not notice back then when we was going to high school you ain't use the internet for fun like you use the internet for research right. do your papers and that was it mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that's it and then sidebar then you was like using aim to message and how last shorties whatever ah uh, ah uh, but we was doing that since junior high but that was the only thing that we used the internet for you know what i'm saying yeah other than that everything was research right up, up right up until we got into college. You know what I'm saying that's when it started becoming more fun or more open to young kids our age starting to use it more. And that's when Black Planet was like, yo, Black Planet that early days was a floodgate. I was going to yeah. hoods. I had no business being in them hoods, my nigga. Yeah. But I still went, you know what I'm saying? Cause too too young to be in them chats, you heard? Too young to be in them chats. Live, live action for the only fans, what we say. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, that's funny. That is funny. That is funny. Yeah, but but I would love to see that movie, the origin of how all this came about. And of course, that was like a, a, a runaway train in how we interact now. Like, again, we from that era or from that time where we like when we when we see women, we go talk to them. We don't wait till later to hit them up on social media. Yo, give me your, your Instagram. Nah, give me your number. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to get right to the functions. So, um, so yeah, I would love to see the work right. of that. All right, so moving on, y'all. Make sure y'all hit Patreon.com. Again, can the brothers get a rap podcast? Again, that's Patreon.com. Can the brothers get a rap podcast? Tap into the latest merchandise. Also... We on our way to the five thousand subscription, so make sure y'all again y'all tap into the subscriptions. Uh, every thousand that we go up, that very next episode, we're gonna be doing some free merchandise giveaways. So we very close to that five thousand subscription for this channel. So make sure you tap in, and also you can tap into our community page where we have all of these questions, just how we have popular opinions. It's fun to run through run through the page and and be a part of the voting process. So make sure y'all tap into that as well. All right, moving on to our must see segment where we talk about our must see movies, must hear music, and must see classic show. You want to start it off, or you want me to start this one off? No, you can start it off. Okay. 
Uh, you look like Key and Pill's cousin. Uh, shout out to Zachary Perry. Uh, okay. All right, so my must-see three movies. First, My first movie, I know how I do. I don't have a theme, you know what I'm saying? I freestyle, and I try to name movies that I think y'all haven't seen or haven't tapped into. So here we go. First movie came out in 1996 that is a must-see. It's called The Great White Height. Mm. Uh, directed by one of the legends in the game, uh, Reginald Hutland. He's responsible and he's directed top tier upper echelon comedy movies such as House Party, such as Boomerang, such as The Ladies Man. Three top tier fire comedies, including The Great White Height. Uh, this movie stars Damon Wayans, Samuel L. Jackson, Peter Berg, Jeff, Go uh, Jeff uh, Goldblum, Corbin Bronson, Jamie Foxx, John Lovett's crazy ass, Rocky Carroll from the show Rock, Chief uh, Martin, beautiful, fine ass Sally Richardson, the only woman that could, that, that, that's even in a conversation with Halle Berry at that time. Uh, Reno Wilson, who was hilarious, and Albert Albert Hall, legend in the game. Dope movie about a, a heavyweight champion. He's been killing everybody in his division, and he's looking for somebody to fight. Samuel Jackson plays the manager, and you have to see the rest of the movie. Make sure y'all tap in again to see The Great White Hype. Second movie that is a must-see, Godzilla. Godzilla, the one that came out in 1998. Uh, this movie uh, was directed by Roland Waldridge. Uh, he he's directed. He's the he's the go-to man for these type of movies because under his belt, he's directed uh, Stargate, 2012, Independence Day, The Day After Tomorrow, Moonfall. So those titles alone. Y'all know what type of time he's on when it comes to these type of movies. I love this version of Godzilla because I love the pacing of it. Um, and it's a dope movie. It stars uh, Matthew Broderick. Uh, Y'all probably know him for playing in Ferris Bueller Day Off. Uh, Maria uh, Maria Pitt Pitolo, Gene Reno, Hank Arizaro, uh, Kevin Dunn, and Michael Lerner. Dope movie, obviously, is about Godzilla. Him... Uh, the Godzilla uh, basically taking over New York City, and you got to see the rest of the movie. It's actually a dope movie, so make sure you tap into Godzilla from 1998. And my last movie is called The Act of Vengeance. came out in 1974. Yes, y'all, 1974. It's a must-see. Directed by Bob Keelan. Uh, stars Joanne Harris, Lisa Moore, Peter Brown. Steve Canley, uh, Nanetto Bravo, Connie Strickland. Uh, this movie is a horror. It's crazy. Um, it's about a serial killer. I don't want to get shut down, but it's about <laughs> a serial killer, right? Put it like this, Roman Jack, because I'm going to say Roman Jack because he's mentioned this movie. This is eight millimeter on steroids, Rowan Jack. So this, be prepared, bro. <laughs> be prepared. Be prepared. Again, this movie's called Act of Vengeance from 1974. It's about a serial killer, and he engages in sexual assaults. And he's a serial sexual assaulter so the women gathered up the all the women that he sexually assault gather up to go get him mm. it's a must see must see movie so again my three movies acts of act of vengeance godzilla from 1998 and the great white <laughs> They said what they do, show too much ankle. <laughs> ah. You would you would think, right? But it, 
it's a must see movie. It's crazy. It it makes eight millimeter. Eight millimeter is a is an after school special to acts of vengeance. Just saying. Mm. Go see that, John. Go see that. Yeah, it's your turn, bro. All right. So uh, I'm going to do a part two to my last one. Are we living in a simulation? I figured there was a, more movies on the list that I definitely had to mention. So I got three movies with my theme. As y'all always know, I always got a theme. So I'm doing a part two. Are we living in a simulation? First movie is called Source Code. Came out in 2011. Stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Michelle uh, Monaghan, Vera uh, Farmiga, Jeffrey Wright, legendary Jeffrey Wright, uh, Michael Arden, Russell Peters, Kaz Avnar, and James A. Woods. It's about um, this uh, part of the military that's trying to stop this uh, this bombing. And they uh, utilize Jake Gyllenhaal's character to try to do it. But you got to see the movie on how they do it and how it, it plays about. Crazy movie. The ending is wild crazy. That's why I say it. it's part of Are You Living in a Simulation? Because the ending is crazy. You're not going to even expect the ending. So got to see that movie. Next one on the list is Stranger Than Fiction. Fire, fire movie right here. Uh, came out in 2006. One of Will Ferrell's, I feel as though one of his his best movies, again, stars Will Ferrell, Emma Thompson, Dustin Hoffman, Maggie Gyllenhaal, uh, Queen Latifah, Tony Hale, uh, uh, Tony Luce, and ja uh, Zach Helm. It's about this guy who's a, um, he's like an insurance adjust uh, adjuster. He's living a crappy life. And then one day he hears uh, a voice in his head, but it's not actual voice in his head. It's actually a voice of somebody. Matter of fact, you just got to watch the movie. So <laughs> voice in his head. That's all I'm giving you. It's a fire ass movie. You got to see it. It's very trippy. Definitely a dope movie to watch called Stranger Than Fiction. Last but not least, classic movie on this list. It's called The Cell. Came out in 2000. Stars uh, Jennifer uh, Lopez, Vincent D'Onofrio, Vince Vaughn, Jake Weber, Mink, uh, Kim Kaczynski Nichols, Tara Subkoff, Catherine Sutherland, and Dylan Baker. Uh, stars uh, Jennifer Lopez, who's a, a police detective chasing after a serial killer. They finally catch him, but he goes into a coma. But he still has one of his victims out there in the loose, and they're trying to find where this victim at and how they go about doing it is fire. So you got to go see that joint. So my movies from Are You Living in Simulation Part 2 is The Source Code, Stranger Than Fiction, and The Cell. Got to go see those movies. Trip you the fuck out. You'll love it. Great time. See what I'm saying? That's a fact. And that's easily Jennifer Lopez's best movie. Easily. Fact. Easily. Fact. That, that is a top 10 movie. It was ahead of its time. As far as the cinema cinematography and, and certain shots that they capture without telling you guys the movie for real, but easily one of her best movies. I was actually in a movie with Jennifer Lopez and Made in Manhattan, but my my part in the movie was so quick. It's it was uh it was a scene where there was like a hotel scene. You just see people walking through. And this when I was in high school. I was like seventeen at the time, and my little scene in Made in Manhattan. You see me walking, just walking past or whatever. So. Uh, shout out to J-Lo, but that was easily her best movie is uh, The Cell. Uh, Russ said, uh, I'm he said, with my fiance, I'm living with Godzilla. <laughs> Godzilla. Yeah. yeah. Make sure you're making the right choice, broski. Real, real window 1954, best movie as well. I'm going to check that out. Honorable mention, City of God. That is a dope movie, uh, Ace. That is a definitely dope movie. I think I mentioned City of God already, though. I think I mentioned that in the past episodes. My man was close to J-Lo. Yo, J-Lo, be honest with you, J-Lo bubble, because when I was 17, I had to take a look at that bubble, right? So when she walked past me, you know you had the, what they say in 40-year-old version, you don't look at it. You catch it with the what? The peripheral. So mm -hmm. I learned 
peripheral game at 16, 17, like looking at the booty. And it was a nice butt. It wasn't crazy, but what's going to throw you off is that J-Lo in person is flawless. Her face, flawless. She is flawless in person. I look. I kept looking at her like with the peripheral because she even on set she had one of the biggest bodyguards paws I've ever seen in my life. He was literally like six eight, three hundred pounds muscle, and even on set he's like right next to her. I'm like, dude, like, like get out of here. Like she on set. Right. What happen to her on set, dude? Nothing. Have, Nothing gonna happen. I take a look at that bubble, and then my scene was like when she walking into the hotel, and I'm walking right past her. That's when they got me in the movie. It's literally like one second where you see me just walking by, and I see I took a look at that butt or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know what I mean? Shout out to J-Lo, made in Manhattan. Good shout movie. out. Shout good, out. Good wholesome movie. All right, moving on. Uh, uh, Three acts of music that you must hear. Three acts of movie that you must hear. All right, my first uh, album that you must hear is Fuji's, the score album that came out in 1996. Top tier album, must hear. Of course, you already know Legendary Lauren Hill, Wine Club John. Make sure y'all tap into the Fuji album, the score from 1996. Second must hear album, the Tamiya self titled album. Yes, Grand Hill's wife, Tamiya. Self-titled album came out in 1998. Top tier fire album. She has at least like two number one songs on that album. And the rest of the songs are slaps. Won't be disappointed. And number three, uh, Jagged Edge, Jagged Little Trail came out in 2001 album. Album is fire. They got like three, four number ones on that album. That album goes crazy. So again, that's Jagged Edge. Jagged Little Trail album, uh, Tamiya, self-titled album, 1998, and the Fuji's The Score album. Make sure y'all tap into that. Diddy was her bodyguard. <laughs> Talk about J-Lo. Oh, man. Meek Mill should have had a 6'8", 300-pound bodyguard to guard that. I can't even say that. Uh, J-Lo, damn, she from the block. And she has a cake like GTA San Andreas, you feel me? <laughs> Yo, y'all going into the chat. That's funny. So, yeah. So, make sure y'all tap into those albums. All right. We got a classic show. Classic show. All right. You want to start off or you want me to start off? No, I can start off. So, still sticking to my theme of are we living in a simulation? Classic show. It's not a classic, but it just came out recently. Is on, um, is on HBO. You can catch it now. It's called Westworld. Gotta go see Westworld. Came out in 2016. Has three seasons. Uh, stars Evan, Rachel Wood, our, our legend, Jeffrey Wright, uh, T- uh, Tonde Newton, Ed Harris, James Marsden, Tessa Thompson, and, and Angela uh, uh, Safarin. Anthony Hopkins, Aaron Paul, Luke Hemsworth, Jimmy Simpson, and Ben Barnes. It's about a futuristic society who has uh, created AI, artificial intelligence, and machines, but they created a theme park for adults to interact with, with these machines how every way, how every, any way they see fit. And you just got to watch the series to just see how it plays out. Fire, fire series. I'm mad they only gave it three seasons. They should have at least gave it one more to really flesh out the, the ending. But the ending was still good enough the way they did it. Got to go see it, how, see how it plays out. Again, it's called Westworld. It's on HBO right now. So you go check that shit out. Fire, fire series right there. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all tap into Westworld. They, they, yo, they funny in the chat. They funny in the chat. Uh, my must-see show, must-see show, classic show, is called uh, Resurrection Boulevard. Came out in 2000, had three seasons, dope show, stars uh, Lou Diamond Phillips, Michael DiLorenzo, Elizabeth, uh, I, I, for some reason I missed her last name, excuse me, uh, uh, Nicholas Gonzalez, Ruth Plana, and Marisol Nichols. 
a dope show about a family of boxers. And uh, uh, it was it's a drama. Uh, it's a Showtime type of show. And it's a must-see. The family of boxers, you know, it's in their bloodline to make it. And, of course, they have everybody has their own demons and its own drama. So it's a must-see show. Again, it's called Resurrection Boulevard. And it came out on Showtime in the year 2000. So make sure y'all check that out. Uh, so uh, moving on, you got Cologne Force? Got to get you a smell good. So this smell good for this week. Um, if you look good, you feel good, you move good, you got to smell good. So you got to grab a bottle of Grooming Lounge. Now the fragrance for this one is, the scent for this one is called One Cool Customer. Dope scent, got to get it. Um, can't go wrong with this one right here. So again, it's called Grooming Lounge. The scent is called One Cool Customer. Get it, you won't be disappointed at all. And Rowan Jack, your wife gonna love it. You know what I'm saying? So get that for yourself, and she won't be so uptight. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. They throwing riddles in the chat. I'm not good with riddles, y'all. I'm really not good with riddles. Uh, have you seen Tulsa King? Yes, Tulsa King is top tier fire. Uh, I, I, that show was very easy for Sylvester because Sylvester Stallone is such a top tier actor that you, it's a master class on how he acts on Tulsa King. And I can't wait for season two. They're taking forever for, for season two. Uh, my brother Stallone, 70, 77, and more ghetto than me in that. It, and it, it, we was talking about that the other day, how Sylvester Stallone is damn near 80 years old and still could tussle and fight young dudes and, and, and race, you know, run people down, you know. So I feel like other people can do it as, uh, as you know, in movies where they have action, action heroes as well, too. All right, so let's move on. It's time to rap, y'all. It's time to rap. It's that part of the show where it's time to rap. This segment is brought to you by Button Snap Streaming, where you get classic movies, shows, documentaries, original content for the viewing pleasure of four ninety nine. Again, Button Snaps Streaming. All right, first order of business on Tom the Rat. Okay, Adidas is set to release a new design that is designed actually as a shoebox. As a sneaker, so their 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 shoe box, the blue shoe box, they're actually designing that as a, a a sneaker design. What do you think about that? Wait, the shoe box is going to be a design as a sneaker? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Now they missed me with that one. They don't got no black creators over there making some fire. Uh, I don't know if I'm copying the D. It's been a minute since I copped the Adidas anyway, so it's like. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that one. You know what I'm saying? I like the um the what should we call the tubulars. Tubulars was fire. Um they did have some fire shit. I'm not gonna lie, but again, I don't know. I gotta see what it looks like first. It might mm -hmm. might be some. So I gotta see what it looks like. You know what I'm saying? Give mm -hmm. the box to the homeless. Oh, <laughs> uh, they saying uh listen to the brothers, what about uh, Michael B. Jordan doing Easy E documentary. I think that's dope. He's doing the documentary. He's not playing Easy E. So, you know, that's dope. Uh, I would use a different voice to narrate it. I, I wouldn't use Michael B. Jordan's voice to narrate it. Uh, honestly. Where's that my, where's that, that that documentary that um that they were supposed to do for Dr. Sebi that, you know what I'm saying? First, Nipsey Hussle was supposed to do it, but then he rest in peace. Then Nick Cannon told me he was going to do it, and that was like a couple of years ago. We ain't hear nothing since. Yeah, that's that's a wrap. That's, that's a, a dub key. Dub dub. That's a dub dub. Uh, you're probably talking about the movie 23, number 23, uh, Stitches 58. Yeah, with Jim Carrey. Yeah. You, you see, Ron Jack was on it. Yeah, Ron Jack was on it. All right, that so move. movie. I I think I think that idea is super duper trash. It just shows again, like you said, lack of ideas, lack of being in, you know, just in innovative. And uh it's 
Like, it's nothing fly about that. It's, it's Yo, not- I don't know if this is part of your time to rap, but talk about no lack, no, no style, no lack of ideas. Yo, tell me why Balenciaga came out with a bracelet, right? Uh huh. But I swear to God, a bracelet looks like a a, a fucking brand new pack of fucking uh, tape. You know, like the not Scotch tape, but like the like the mm-hmm. clear duct tape. Mm-hmm. That's what that's, the bracelet looks like. That's that's trash. <laughs> so I was gonna be a band no more. You better throw that shit over there somewhere, man. And nobody wants that. And but, bro, people buy that out. People gonna buy that out. It's going into my next thing and. In uh, in time to rap, is that almost ten thousand people waited twenty four hours in New York City, New York City, y'all, for the Versace sample sale. Almost ten thousand people. So they can York- be complaining. They can be complaining that they rent is high. You come on now. Yeah, you know I'm saying y'all got money. Oh, y'all got more money. I right, we got some for y'all for a sample sale, like. In New York City, again, we just said this last episode, we're not so brand dependent. Like, when we like something, we rock with something. So the brand don't make us. We make the brand. Right? But to hear it, people in New York City waited over 24, I mean, 24 hours for the sample sale. So y'all outside just waiting, like, just to get the sample sale. And they show these people bum rushing into the Versace spot. And it's like, come on. Like, that's so low ranked and trash. That's stupid. Um, I don't know. Like again, like we don't chase we don't chase brands like that. So I I was never the type when Jordans came out. I was waiting at the stores for when to drop. I was never I was never that type. When I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But to wait out there for 24 hours, like don't you got a job? Don't you got responsibilities? Obviously not. If you did for 24 hours, that's for crazy. Some for some samples, uh, y'all know y'all had that eyes. Oshkosh overalls. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Oshkosh would be popping. Stop playing. Mm-hmm. Give me Eddie Murphy and Rick James vibes. Party all the time. Awesome duel, you guys. Uh, appreciate you. Appreciate you, my friend. Appreciate you. All right, so moving on. Moving on. So they're set to release season two for the Them series. So Them mm-hmm. is coming. And this particular season is called The Scare. So this particular season, I seen the trailer. It looks more modern day, and they working in that parameters. I said within the first episode, the first four episodes of uh, them, the first four episodes in the first season, that was a hard watch. By the time episode five came around, I was ready to slap a lot of a lot of people. I was ready to say it was a hard watch, a very hard watch. Now they're going into season two. I'm debating whether I'm going to have the the mindset to watch it. I don't know if I'm going to be eager to watch season two just because of the it's such a hard watch. Yeah, I mean, the, the second season is like the early 90s. So it's around the L.A. riots and the whole. Uh, Rodney King situation and the main character plays a LA detective and all that. <sighs> Again, I I mean I'm interested to see how they 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 do it. Like it should look it look it look kind of good, son. I'm not even gonna hold you. That the um trailer was like, yo, this should look. If it's anything like the first season, it's about to be some some crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? And of course, the theme I feel again is they playing on the race card or whatever cool but i i get it it's uh it's it's a race and the uh, aspect of race is for some people some, some horrific you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so they playing on that theme and the the girl she's playing in that uh working in the la police department she's a female she's a black woman and we already know how la give it up so you know what i'm saying so of course race is going to be a major major factor in this season of course so I'm I'm eager to see what they got going on. So, and the, of course, I'm still with you. The first season was really, really tough. So, and it was just, they was really pushing my buttons with this joint. And it's yeah. like, yo. So, yes. Like, yes. Y'all, you, you're making it seem like a lot of our people was just turning the other cheek type joint. Like, 
Nah, so I don't I don't believe a lot of us was few, yes, but you can't tell me a majority of cats in the 50s and 60s was turning the other cheek and they was just getting down with the program. It was like, nah, son. You know what I'm saying? But I'm eager to see how this second season is going to play out, how they do this one. And it, it looked pretty good, son. It looked, it looked like it's about to be some fire. You know what I'm saying? It, it do look good, but I, I just remember that first season. I'm t- after after episode three or four, it was very hard to watch, and not because it wasn't good or it, you know it wasn't entertaining. It was just it was a lot of button b- button pressures in in that in that season. No and facts. E- even watching the rest of the season was still very. Uh, it was just a tough watch. Like after what episode in season one was like real tough for you to watch the rest of the the, the first season of them. By by like episode four and five, I think that's when they were showcasing when it was uh, what happened to the mother. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It was just like, yeah. oh come on, son! Like, yeah. yo, what, what, like why why are we doing this, son? And the baby and the baby. Like, come on, son! Yeah, like, yeah. bro had to leave and. Yeah. leave his wife unprotected and it's like bro come on son yeah yeah and then it's just the fact of a white family could just come in a, a person's property violate and just get away with it like yeah i'd rather her have shot at them tough watch just, you know what i'm saying it was just a tough watch and it's yeah. like bro son, come on y'all yeah. doing y'all doing a little bit too much and the actors involved, and it was like, oh, yeah, this is a great scene to play. Like, oh, I'm going to give mm-hmm. it my all. Like, mm-hmm. come on. So I'm yeah. just hoping that this one, we just going to see. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm give it my attention and see what they do and see how far they go with this one. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, just real quick in the chat, they saying uh, we need Denzel Washington, American Gangsta, as a TV show, uh, but we know the network's or to Snowflake to do that nowadays. MLK was Professor X or Professor Xavier. Martin Luther King was Magneto. Uh, shout out to Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Yo, what up, y'all? What up to you, Jacqueline? What's popping? Power. I think, the, I think the best drug series we ever got outside of the wire has to be Snowfall. Can nothing other, no drug, depiction of how it was in the 80s can no other show can top snowfall other than the wire you know what i'm saying snowfall to me was the top tier you know what i'm saying it ended the best way to end you know what i'm saying it was just one of the best shows outside of the wire as far as drugs how it affects the communities the players in the drug game all that and um Oh yeah, Breaking Bad was fired too. Breaking Bad, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna front. Breaking Bad was lit. So yeah, so we've had these top tier shows about showcasing how it affects the drugs. I mean, how the drugs affect the community, how dealing drugs affect the drug dealers because they're starting to showcase that they're addicted to selling the drug too as well. And The Wire, Breaking Bad, uh, Snowfall, those those three shows right there is just I think. I think I think what saved Snowfall was the ending. If the ending had Franklin riding off into the sunset with seventy something million dollars, uh, they was able to get Alton back, that he was alive somewhere. Uh, Teddy was to go to jail and not die. Uh, I think if it would have ended that way, um, it, it would it, it it wouldn't have been realistic. Facts. It wasn't realistic. And I think that was the saving grace of the show because it started off great. And then in the middle, somewhere it got kind of like, you know, just a little clunky. And then it, it got back on track. And then the ending was spectacular, even though I hated to see Franklin go out like that. Uh, obviously, The Wire, you know, ain't nothing touching The Wire. But I'm still, I still reserve judgment for power. Um, because of they 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 did announce that they're going to do one more season for uh for Tyreek's character and Power. Even though see the only thing about Power, like there was no real uh uh there was no real like 
repercussions that people had to really face. Yeah, and there was no consequences. Consequ niggas, is, niggas is killing cops and everything. Yeah. Cool. Like, yeah. Nah. And like, yeah. So I, but I still reserve judgment because they have a universe to that. That's a um, new trans city. <laughs> new trans city. Y'all better cut it out. And you know what's crazy? If they came up with new trans city, that thing will probably go crazy. Uh um, ain't gonna get my vote on that. Not nah, damn sure not me. Uh, would you would you have New Jack City as a TV show? Me personally, no, no. I would love to see, I would love to see a movie, but not a TV show. Um, mainly because I think the images that it portray, and I think people would get caught up more so in the fact that the lifestyle and not the fact that it's supposed to be a cautionary tale. Um. So, yeah. You know, the only reason for me, I don't want to see a New Jack City TV show because it's like crack decimated our communities in the 80s and early 90s. But let's get into what's decimating the communities now. Let's get into this fentanyl that's mm -hmm. the decimating uh, communities in South Dakota, North Dakota, Wyoming, where there's hardly any black people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I want to see a show like that. And then on top of it, the culture is different. The, the drug game killed our, our culture back in the 80s and 90s when the culture mindset was about being bosses and being independent and making your own money, buying houses and doing all that fly shit. The culture now is being users. So it's like you're going to use, try to get rich. People are not getting rich if you're using. So I think the culture is, is, is different um, in that regard as well, too. Uh, meth <laughs> Meth Men of the Mountains. <laughs> that's a dope name, though. I ain't gonna hold you. That's nah, a fact. That's a dope name. It'd it just be some drug. It'd be some. If it's only about drugs now, if it's some other stuff going on, then yeah, I, I, I don't like it. But it was on about some, on, some, on some wrong turn type shit. <laughs> like, yeah, some 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 wrong turn meets a uh, 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 hills have eyes type Yeah. Thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Type meat Make, type joint. Sprinkle some meth in there and shit, yo. You know what I'm some, trans, some trans America, but just sprinkle the meth in there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, nah. All right, y'all. So let's move on. Let's move on. I right, Ice Cube has offered Caitlin Clark five million dollars to play in the big three. What do you think about that? That's real good. She ain't gonna see that kind of money if she go to the WNBA. That's for sure. <laughs> That's a fact. Yeah. So she bet she better um she better take that bet. She's, I don't know she's, if that's gonna mess up with her 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 collegiate. Um, not because she's a senior. She's a senior. She's a senior. She's a senior. Oh yeah, she better take that bet. Cause that's yeah. gonna boost the that's gonna boost his his brand. Facts. Cause, Cause he could shell out that kind of money. She come through play. And then he could shell out more money. You know what I'm saying? Because then the, the sponsors will, oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You got top tier. They're going to bring more bread out. You know what I'm saying? They're going to cut more checks. So that's a win-win for the for the organization, Ice Cube, Caitlin. You know what I'm saying? It's, everybody going to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody I think can make this money. Everybody could be happy. You know what I'm saying? Making this money. You know what I'm saying? Now, nah, but I think it will, I think it will be a, a dope thing. But if she playing the big three, she got it. She better bring her A game because ain't none of them old school NBA players is going to let her come in and cook. They going they going to take it to her. So she better come with her A game. She better make every shot she can make because she got to guard somebody too. And this is not the big three for women. This is the big three for for men and women. So right. they they going to be looking to cook her, bump her. So if she gonna play in the big three, she ain't gonna get you know preferential treatment. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but it would raise the the status of the league and the and the profile of her. The fact that she's playing in the league with men, and uh, it, it, it'll be interesting. But she's yet to uh, accept the offer. She's yet to do that. Uh, Halloween is getting TV. Can't be man as the TV show now. Nah. Uh, Women is to play men in theater back in the day, so we need so now men are playing 
in the WNBA to get back at the. I'm telling you, man, if, if there was a real live Joanna man playing in the WNBA right now, they'd be cooking up. Uh, go to Alabama, you'll see Hills have eyes every day. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so moving on. Uh, Good Times has announced that they doing an animated series through Netflix, Flex, through Netflix, and is set to premiere April twelfth. Uh, Stephen Curry, Norman Lear, Seth uh, McFarlane are the executive producers. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that. You know what I'm saying they could have just came up with anything new. Why do why remake Good Times? And then set it in the time frame we are now. And the Seth McFarlane, mm, you know, the, the jokes is going to be real, real sketchy. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the poking fun at our culture is going to be real divisive. I don't know how I feel about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to be cute. And I don't know if I, I'm feeling that at all. You know what I'm saying? Cause good times was, it had it had its jokes, but then it had its moments where it was just showcasing living in the inner city, how how it is to raise a family, what a black man deals with with being the the head of the household, how much pressure it is raising black kids in America, and then you're gonna go around and turn that into animation and make it real jokey. Nah, it just again back to our point of Hollywood don't got no new ideas. You just selling money on some goofy shit like that's goofy as shit and and it's, we're gonna be the butt of the jokes you know what i'm saying so it's like nah i'm not feeling that i seen the trailer the trailer is very cringy um norman lear is the the executive producer for the original uh the original um good time show and who got fired from the good time show right the father that, that played, you know, Mr. Evans. We talk about um, the the actor. Uh, God, I can't can't believe I'm forgetting this legendary uh, John actor, Amos. John Amos. John Amos. He got fired because he challenged the writing room for not making the JJ character so damn goofy, so damn buffoonish. Like a, a young melodated kid in the 70s that live in the Cabrini Green projects. All kids are not the same, but you're not gonna find goofy kids in at this time in the Cabrini Green projects of Chicago. Mm -hmm. He's just the epitome of goofy at that time. And John Amos is like, nah, he's gonna have to go through real stuff. It's like and that was the reason why he was why he was fired. He was fired when they killed his character off. So and then was funny when they fired him later on, they made JJ's character a little bit more serious because now they didn't only just face him off, they faced Esther Rose's character off as well. So now he is the you know the 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 the, the head the of so the goofy guy. Okay. Right. Right. So you know it, it very interesting. So this kind of lets me know that, and then the other executive producers you have tied to this, things are going to be very loose, very flippant, very cringe worthy. So I'm I'm not enthused to see this, but it, it will be out. All right, moving on. Bronx man uh, named Draquan Drayton rapes ten year old girl that he met online. He turns himself into authorities on Friday. What, this Friday that passed or this Friday coming up? No, this Friday that passed. Oh. <sighs> oh, man. This, they're going to throw him under the jail, son. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I hope he gets all everything that he deserves. Send him to Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, for um, those who don't get it, y'all, for those who tuning in probably for the first time, we talked about last episode, there was a guy who got, that was in Turkey that had to do 20 years, 20 years, 20 days in jail because he looked gay. Uh, and this was in Turkey. So that's why he said send him, in, send him to Turkey. So imagine him going to Turkey. It's, it's 
gonna be over for him. Um, but yeah, that's just uh, like as parents, we just gotta be more in tune on what our kids are doing. I don't even know how that was even able to happen. Um, it's just that's just terrible. Like it's just. Oh my God, it's just tough to even think about like as a 10 year old going through something like that and you got to deal with it for the rest of your life. That's not something that you can just, you you can work it out. You know what I'm saying? That's something you got to live with for forever. So it, it's so sad that the child went through that. Um, I just wish the parents were more involved in their kid's life for them to even, for that man to even come in contact with the kid. I don't know how that happened. Um, I'm glad the police found him or he turned himself in. So now they can prosecute him to the full extent of the law. Don't even give that man no no time for no parole. Um well, he met her on a social media platform and then she went up to meet up meet meet him uh you know face to face and went with him to his home and you know. Yeah, that dude deserved life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. And yeah, full extent of law, get him up out of here. And yeah, it's just tough, man. It, tough situation for sure. Facts. Uh, I don't see how a grown man finds uh, children attractive. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that to me is just crazy. I, yeah. He was I able to meet up with her is just crazy. I don't care how developed a 10 year old little girl is. She doesn't have the requisite body type, mind, uh, age, everything that you would even find attractive as a grown man. You know? Yeah. That you would find women, bro. So uh, I hope they put him under the jail, me personally. And I hope he has a hard time for life or next 25 years. Either way, I hope he has a real hard time. Uh, moving on, uh, are you? Are we going to remake Everybody Hates Chris next and every episode with Will Smith slap? <laughs> oh, you stupid! Just move it. Either you, it's either you employed. Are you? Are you the tax man? Are you the IRS, Mike? Yeah, you. You, you asking federal questions? Yeah, you <laughs> for the feds. You know, I, I I actually uh own a few businesses, legit businesses. So and I do and, and that's on my tax form. So uh I don't know what you're getting at with that question. And my brother's a professional photographer, so you know. Yeah. But thank you for tuning in and hit that like button. All right, moving forward. Uh Miles Morales Spider Man teaser just dropped. Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, and it's not and it's not an animated. It's an actual film. Now they need to continue the animated joint. What they doing? See, see the teaser. The teaser is tough. The teaser is tough. The teaser is tough. I know you're a big fan of the of the animated uh, version of it, but the teaser is tough. So I'm surprised you didn't get a chance to see that yet, but that teaser is tough. Um, well, they just they made two of them and they left the second one in the cliffhanger. So I'm waiting for the third one. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Waiting to see how they 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 finish this off. You know what I'm saying? They talk about multiverses, different versions of Miles Morales and different universes. You know what I'm saying? Shit is ill. Yeah. So finish that off. Yeah. And then we could get to the live action. I'm I'm not I'm not knocking no live action joint. You know yeah. What I'm saying? Just finish the other joint that you got on the plate. Finish that, and then give me the new plate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check out the the teaser for that and see how it's, yeah. how it's cooking. It, it looks fire. I ain't gonna hold you. It looks fire. All right, moving on. Um, the Simpsons. It's funny how the Simpsons just be. Uh, I don't know. They get the playbook before everybody else. It's funny that. The Simpsons have projected the crash of the Baltimore Bridge and the downfall of P. Diddy in ep past episodes. I haven't watched some Simpsons in like so long. I can't remember when the last time I actually sat down and watched an episode of The Simpsons. But they've been known to um, 
quote unquote predict certain things. Uh, the creator of the show, Matt Groening, has been dropping uh, little tidbits here and there for years throughout mm -hmm. the, the entirety of the Simpsons uh, run. So I'm not surprised that they put this on there. And you know what I'm saying it's like, it's interesting. I, I would have to see how the episodes played out, but yeah. They, yeah. they've been doing it for a very long time. So it's, it, yeah. it, either it's one of two things, either they predicting it or the, it's predictive programming, meaning that, you know what I'm saying? They playbook. Know, you know what I'm saying? They reading off the playbook like, oh, I got a better play. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, I they, can't I, say that they're predicting stuff because, again, Matt Groening and these producers are in upper echelon. Mm -hmm. uh, um, groups so they see and hear things and they part of certain organizations and certain top tier groups that us as regular folk can never get into these meetings and these sit downs and their type of parties mm -hmm. ain't for everybody you know what I'm saying it's very select few people who be in those people's um, area so for them to have these knowledge or get put on to certain these things. And again, you know, it's been already uh, debunked that CIA is all part, is with, is in bed with Hollywood. So Facts. it's not far-fetched for them to like be put on to certain things and like, hey, we're going to put it out there because how the, how the matrix and how the system works is they have to tell you the truth. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if they tell you the truth in a movie, in a cartoon, or a music video, and you just look at it, and you just and you as a viewer only look at it as entertainment. You can't be mad because they turn around and say, "Hey, we did tell you." You just viewed it as entertainment. You didn't, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You didn't look at it no other kind of way. You just looked at it as entertainment. And then when the shit actually happens, then you're like, "Oh, ah, uh, ah," uh, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's yeah. like you're in limbo. They're playing the game. The, they're playing the game the way the game's supposed to be played. So you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm mad at it. Rowan Jackson in the chat that uh, South Park has been hitting the predictions too. I, I've never been a, a real fan of South Park, but that's that's interesting to hear as well. Too. South Park is still on. I, I don't know. God damn, that's like the, yo, it's been on since like ninety eight, ninety nine. Yeah, they 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 yeah, run. If, if they're still on, they run is is worthy of Simpsons because Simpsons yeah. early nineties. Yeah, late yeah. 80s, like 88, 89 or something. That's crazy. But, uh -huh. uh, yeah, again, there's uh, creators of South Park, creators of Seth MacFarlane, creators of of, of um, The Simpsons, all these people, like, they, they put on. You know what I'm saying? They mm -hmm. don't have that, that creative edge to just make all this up. You know what I'm saying? And then mm -hmm. for it to actually happen in real life, that that's just too far-fetched y'all feel me so yeah. i i feel as though they're creating these scenarios and letting it play out and that's how it'll be happening you know what i'm saying trust me they they got that playbook in advance you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. all right moving on y'all moving on okay um a credit report influencer ashley grayson was found guilty and murder for hire plot. She was planning to have three people murdered by a couple for in total a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Twenty thousand for a lady named Sherelle who was a customer that gave a bad review on on her credit report influence her channel. Another twenty k for a lady named uh, Dereka who's a rival influencer. And 60K for a gentleman named Patrick, who happens to be her ex-boyfriend. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, these fake influencers and fake business owners don't be having no real business. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then, like, I be wanting to support our own son. I do be wanting to do it. But in this consumer, in this capitalist society, like, if you don't give me my product, when I pay for the product or the product you give me after I pay for it is lackluster. I have the right to bash you about it. Mm -hmm. I have the right to say like, Hey, 
this person, don't spend no money with them. Their customer service is terrible. I waited weeks for my product. I didn't get what I paid for. You can't be mad. If you have a business, you're opening your doors to that. So your business has to be more than stellar so people can give you that great, great review. And even if you do great, uh, give great customer service, people are still going to talk bad about it. Mm -hmm. But at least you know you're still giving great service. But if you're giving horrible service and you're mad that people turn around and complain about your horrible service, you can't be mad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't mm -hmm. be mad about that. And on top of that, you probably scamming on top of that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's it, like 20 in 2019 to now, it's been years, it's been the year of the scam. Everybody's scamming. Everybody's an influencer with all these get rich quick schemes. You know what I'm saying? Audio books. Audio books, or oh, come to my seminar and blah 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 and all this other goofy shit that don't don't have no results at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Or or pay for my class and all this weird shit. Like, nah, man. And it'd be our own doing it to our own. You know what I'm saying? Because most of the time they grifted. They know that, oh, we in this woke mentality. So you like, yeah, I'm a I'm a mess with my black business and all that. Like, nah, son, if you got terrible service, I'm not messing with you. Mm -hmm. Point blank, period. Like, I already have two issues with two black businesses right now. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, yo, I'm giving you the opportunity to do right, and you're not doing right. Mm -hmm. Like I ordered some a piece of clothing three weeks ago. I can't even get in contact with you. When I send emails out, you take forever to respond. And then when you do respond, you give me some bouffale of like, oh, our, our production line got messed up and it pushed our, 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 pushed our stuff back. How is that my fault? Mm -hmm. How is that my problem? Mm -hmm. You tell me, I pay you this money. I'm going to get the item delivered 10 to 12 days. It's now three weeks. You know what I'm saying? Facts. And then another company I'm messing with, uh, Eye Doctor, I gave them these frames to put glasses on eight months ago. Mm -hmm. Now I come back to get my frames. I'm getting hit with the bouffale. Oh, we got to wait for the doctor. Then the doctor tell me he coming on Saturday with it. Then I call. He too busy to pick up the phone. Like, where's my glasses at? <laughs> you know brother, That's all I want to know. Brother need to see. You feel me? I need to see, blood. Where my glasses at, kid? Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I want to mess with y'all, but this is the, boof, the goofy shit y'all do. And it's like, I'm sorry to say, I go another business. I'm getting top tier service right then and there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say that, but in the capitalist society, I get to choose with my money, where I spend my money. That's a fact. That's a and fact. You can't be mad. And then Because if I go and spend money with y'all and I get bad service, I'm going to be mad. Because mm -hmm. I could have went somewhere else and got top tier service and got my shit done right then and there. But I want to mess with y'all and this is the results I get. Mm -hmm. Now you want to turn around and kill me because you give me bad service. Yeah. <laughs> How's <Yeah>. that? <laughs> like, how? Is yeah. it my fault that you're doing lackluster service, you're doing piss poor for performance, you're not uh, uh, giving me what I paid for, and then I give you a bad review, you tie that me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, like, people got to realize, like, the same business that people can praise is going to be the same business people going to be be able to critique or or, or not be so uh, in favor of your business. So do the best you can do. And, you know what I'm saying? And and, and, and I understand things happen or whatever. Ah, ah. But not in the expense of my time. Right. When I right. already gave you my money. Right. Do that on your time. Do that on your time. Don't do it on my time. Mm -hmm. Not when I got to chase you to find out where my product is. Like, what? Yeah. Now I got to call the the the, the uh, eye doctor tomorrow and pull up on them. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, where my glasses at, B? I feel as though y'all lost my shit. So you better, you better come through with my junk because those were my frames. You know what I'm saying? I came to y'all to put uh, 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 the transitions on my frames. Mm -hmm. So where's my frames at? Yo, shout out to Ja in the building. Shout out to Ja. Make sure you hit that like button. My brother helps us with the show. But yeah, so that's... Now this chick is turning around. She want to do a murder for hire? She bugging. They better give her life without the possibility of parole. Y'all women going to learn, son. Y'all want to be independent? Y'all want to be men? All right, these are the consequences. 
This is and, this is the shit that y'all the, you reap what you sow. What what you, old man said in New Jack City? Idolater, you reap what you sow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You make your bed, you won't sleep in it. So you out here scamming no people. Love. Huh? Devils don't got no love. <laughs> so people you out here scamming people, you think you think you're not gonna you think that's not gonna come back to you? No, uh-huh. sir. You better get life in prison, son. Facts. Yeah. And that's going to teach the next female who thinks she's going to be out here scamming. You better be cool. Because they not playing with y'all. You know what I'm saying? And they you know, know this. Right? You know who told uh-huh. on her? You know who told on her? Who? The, the woman that she tried to get to do the murders. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I'm, let me get half of that. Yeah, I'm going to handle it. And I'm going to go right to um, I'm gonna go right to the feds. Like, yeah, man, this woman tried to pay me money that I didn't get. Wink, wink. Yeah. Yeah, she tried to murder somebody. <laughs> yeah. A hundred racks with three people. That's crazy. That's crazy. She belonged to the streets, they saying in the chat. Yeah, she fun. belonged to the jail streets. She don't belong in no streets. Put that her put her in jail. Yeah, that's a fact. That's put a fact. That's where she belongs. Like that's that's crim- that's beyond criminal. Like that's beyond like like whoa, that's crazy. All because you giving bad reviews. You did. You ain't do what you were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. So for the person to feel like they got got with their money because they put their money up, expecting to get a product, they didn't get the product. They're not gonna get their money back because I'm pretty sure you're not doing no refunds. So the only uh, the only uh, recourse that they have is give you a bad review. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they went in on that review. That's why you got so tight. But to but to put twenty grand on their head though. Cause again, she put on, like what you what you a my boss? Get out of here! She put twenty grand on one, twenty grand on the other, and sixty grand on her ex boyfriend. Like yeah, she yo, she got she got to go. Yeah, why y'all at it? Yeah, so uh, she, she's going to be sentenced on July seventeenth, the day before my birthday. So I hope she yeah. get that. life hope. without the possibility of parole. You need to go to jail. Period. Get that work. Get mm-hmm. that. Work. All right, moving on, moving on. Uh, this segment is brought to you by Bravo Section. Go to BigBravoSection.com. Again, BigBravoSection.com. Book a session with one of the best photographers in the world. If you're in the Miami area, if you're not, you can fly out and hook up your session. Again, that's BigBravoSection.com. You got a pay door for us? So this, uh, you know, Chat, we don't. I son switch it up. We doing petty law, so we <laughs> tapping into the uh, tapping into the Black's Law Dictionary, picking up random words and getting the definition of words that we use every day that have legal definitions that have more uh, validity in our life than we than we uh, choose to believe in. You know what I'm saying? So the first word that we hear a lot but don't really know the legal definition of is minority. So minority is the state or condition of a minor, infancy, opposite of majority, the smaller number of votes of a a deliberative assembly opposed to majority in context of constitution, constitution's guarantee of equal protection, minority does not, does not have merely numerical uh, uh, denotation, but refers to the identifiable, identifiable and specifically disadvantage disadvantage group minority so next word is private private means affecting or belonging to private individuals as distinct from public generally not officials or not clothed or not clothed in off, with office duties private next word is stock again these are random words just I'm just flipping through the book, thumbing through it, and picking random words. So next word is stock. The definition of stock is the goods and wares of a merchant or tradesman kept for sale and traffic in a larger sense, the capital of a merchant or other person, including his merchandise, money, and credits, or in other words, the 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 entire property employed in business, right? Last word is first amendment all right 
So the amendment of the uh, the U.S. Constitution guaranteeing basic freedoms of speech, religion, press, and assembly, and the right to petition the government for redress or grievances. The uh, the various freedoms and rights protected by the First Amendment has been has been has been held applicable to the states through the Due Process Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment. I've been saying I have to look up the 14th Amendment. I'll do that for next episode. So that'll be one of the words I'll look up. So for a petty thought, petty law uh, portion of our podcast, the words of the words tonight are minority, private, stock, and First Amendment. Again, anybody in the chat want to know a uh, definition of words, you're more than welcome to let me know. I'll look those up and have them ready for you for our next episode on Thursday. Lit. Make sure y'all tap into the those next set of words, bro. You've been doing that outstanding job picking those titles of different uh words for the Black's Law Dictionary. Um, just giving the in depth analysis of words that we use all the time and don't know the real meanings of, and we every day signing contracts using these words, whether it's uh, a housing agreement, whether it's uh. uh uh, an agreement with the new a, a new apartment, a new bank account, all types of stuff that we do on a daily basis, even the things that we tap into, store credit that has these this literature within these um documents. So right. game with that. Okay. All right, moving on to the keep the lie live segment. Keep the lie live. Keep the lie live. Uh, my Keep the Lie Live segment for this show today is there's no shame in needing help. Again, there's no shame in needing help. At some point, you're living on this in, in this world that we live in, you're going to need some help, whether it's emotionally, whether it's financially whether it's physically, whether it's mentally, we all need some sort of help at some point in time. No matter how much you are on top of your game, no matter how much you got things going on, at some point you need help. And the reason why I say that, a part of uh, a part of the reason why I say that is, y'all know I recently had surgery on, on my finger, right? I know it looks crazy, right? Um, but my brother, he he's very far away. He's very far away. And, you know, it's a lot going on. So because he's in one particular area and I'm in a whole nother particular area, my brother wasn't able to make it to, you know, to the surgery and stuff like that or whatever. Right. Not mad at that. It's just it, it's just it is what it is. Right. But I needed help for somebody to pick me up after my surgery because. I'm un and I'm on anesthesia. I'm going to be under. I'm going, you know, whatever that they need to do. So mm -hmm. to reach out to someone else to at least help me get from the hospital back home because they wouldn't do the surgery without somebody actually picking me up and not just dropping me off, but actually help me get inside my home, make sure that I'm there safe and soundly, checking on me a little bit. Because I'm I'm on that anesthesia or coming off the anesthesia. So me feeling like I never want to ask anybody for help. Even my brother. Not wanted to ask and not even wanted to put him in a situation where he had felt like he had to make a decision because I'm just independent like that. But I needed that help to find somebody to come help me get from point A to point B. Right? So we all need help, even when people need help with finances. It doesn't make people bad people. They need help. So we all need help. So never be afraid to ask the right questions, to ask the right people, so that way you can get the help. But in order to get that help, you got to pay back your debts too. So you asking for money and you, and you say, hey, I, want, I could pay you back during this time, then guess what, y'all? Pay back what you owe because now you deem untrustworthy and now you're not somebody that could be depend on. Now, if you're the person being asked for money, it may benefit if you don't tell the whole world that 
this person asks you for the money. You know what I'm saying? You could just keep that in-house and let that person keep some sort of dignity. So that's the thing, too. As far as mentally, sometimes we need to hear things from other people because we feel in a certain type of way that, that we could take from what somebody else said that could really help us immediately in our everyday life just to have a different perspective. And that different perspective actually save our life because when we so in tune to making the decisions that we make and like in the society that we live in today, we get so overloaded in making decisions and we make more decisions on a daily basis now than the world has ever done per human. That's how much decisions we're making as human beings. It's so much to the point where we're overloaded. So never be afraid. Never have fear to ask in the right question, ask in the right person, whether it's mentally, whether it's emotionally, whether it's financially, whether it's physically. You need that to move forward and for your own personal growth. So don't be afraid to ask for help. No, nah, that's a ph phenomenal breakdown. That's a fact. Um, people as though growing up with this whole independent I can do this all by myself and da 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 da. Like, nah, son. Nobody can do this by themselves. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we need each other. So that's showcases real growth, real humility to ask for help. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it, nothing wrong with asking for help. You know what I'm saying? Me and my bro, we always ask each other for help. Yo, I got this thing going on in my life. I need, I need help to see a different viewpoint. Cause maybe when you in the thick of things and you in the shit, sometimes you really can't see a different pr perspective because you in it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we say this all the time. While you in it, sometimes it may be hard to see yourself out of it. But guess what? The if you move on and then a week, two weeks later, you look back like, damn, I was really beefing or really thinking I was going through some shit. And guess what? You got through it. Mm -hmm. Now it's in the past. Now it's some, you know what I'm saying? There's something you could look back and laugh at, look back and don't at like, damn, yo, I was I really made through made it through that shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's like life is so interesting in those kind of ways. Whereas when you're in it, I know how hard it is when you're in it to see yourself getting out of it because you're so neck deep into it and you can't you can't fathom a way out. But guess what? You take your time, you breathe, you ask for help, ask for people close to you to give you guidance. Before you know it, you out of the shit and then you into something better. Yeah. And you look back. You'd be like, damn, I was really like, I was good for real. Like, I was really tripping. I thought I was like in some shit, and you're not really in some shit. You really out. You know what I'm saying? You, it's just being in it. I know how that goes. When, when you're in it, it's really hard to see, but mm -hmm. the day moves on, and then you go into the next day and the next day, and then come to come to find out, like, yo, um, you out of it. Like, I was just telling my bro the other day, like, certain days in people's lives have so much importance, like a random day for somebody like october 18th is a random day for somebody but for somebody else that's a very important day it could be a day where they're pitching up an idea to a fortune 500 company or it's a day where they got come up with this money to pay off this to get some back or you know what i'm saying it's a very important day but then when you look at it yo that day had come and gone and now you're on to a new day you know what i'm saying <laughs> so that's how life is always gonna be so sometimes we just gotta Take the time, pause, breathe in, breathe out. And then when you really look at it, like, it's really not that bad. You know what I'm saying? It's really not as hard or as tough as we make it seem to be. You know what I'm saying? It's just another day. We're going to get through it and you're going to get in. You're going to go into a new day. Not saying that something else worse is going to come in the right. in day forward. But mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Life has its challenges for sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I say to myself, God ain't gonna put me in a situation where I can't get myself out of. You know what I'm saying? A mm -hmm. lot of situations I put myself in. You know what I'm saying? So I can't blame that on God. I gotta blame it on myself. So I gotta get myself out of it. You know what I'm saying? So you just move forward, take one day at a time, and then like even with our podcast, we started with like nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah, we started day one. And it was like we had two, three people. Now we just we got day ones now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's yeah. like. Yeah, and despite we, and despite we had day ones. Yeah, and despite what and to add on to what my brother's saying, despite 
sometimes y'all see the numbers where you see, like right now we have seven people, but you've seen it balloon up to 21. And then at the end of the episode, we literally throughout the episode would have at least from anywhere from 700 to 1200 people in the chat. And for some reason, YouTube doesn't give us our proper numbers, but we have a lot of people throughout the episode that's actually in the chat watching and will comment, leave, come back, comment, leave. So, um, so yeah, so to add on to your point where we started right. off, you know, uh, two, three people now, you know, we, you know, we got day ones. So, yeah, shout out to our day ones too. Shout out to our day ones. That's a fact. That's a fact. And Rowan Jack says something that was, uh, that's very important. Opening up to another guy, respect, never let yourself be weak in front of a woman in your life. Now, yeah, that's, that, that, that's how, I don't want to say that's how the show started, but that's how me and my brother was able to open up on a different type of conversation. Because we've always had conversations before about everything else, but when it came to those those hard hitting uh, conversations about what's really going on mentally outside, going on in the surface, like I called my brother. I'm gonna tell y'all this is a true story. I called my brother one day. I said, "Yo, bro, I got something to tell you, but I don't want you to look at me differently because I feel weak as a man." As my brother what is his perspective on what i'm going through mentally in a situation that was my actual words to this man right here mm -hmm. because at that time and place i was like i i really felt like that i couldn't open up to enough i couldn't open up to my ex I couldn't open up to, you know, any of my female cousins because I feel like if I speak to my female cousins that the rest of the family going to know my business. I can't open up to, you know, my other brother because my other brother is dead and gone. I have other blood brothers that I'm not close with. Um, so there was nobody for me to open up to. And I'm going through something mentally and I'm afraid because... I may react a certain way that's going to be in detriment of my life. See what I'm saying? And 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 as a dad and as a, a, a man who is leading the household with my, with my ex, being a father and going through the things I was going through, I was afraid to literally like open up, and I felt like I was going to be looked like less than. So it's funny that you had mentioned that, Rowan, because because that's how. Those conversations on the other side between me and my brother started happening. And his response was like, nah, bro, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you tell me, it doesn't leave this phone. And vice versa. So, um, and it just seemed like every woman that I've ever opened up to, you know, when I was with them, or or just any woman that I've ever opened up to, always throw it in my face, you know, at some point, try to use it against me. So, you know, I've never, I never had a safe space to feel like I opened up and it doesn't come back on, come back on me from, you know, the women that I was dealing with. So even, even, I won't say women friends, but even women who are friends. So mm -hmm. your word, Pete, we live in a society now where your word is your bond has like no meaning only like with certain few people. It used to be a time where your your word was everything. Honor mm -hmm. your if you say you was gonna do something, you did it. You know what I'm saying? Like I really truly believe like being a traitor is a certain there's a certain hell for you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you gain somebody's trust, you you opened up to them and then you turn around and and use that information and knowledge that they gave you in confidence and you use that to stab them in the back, whether it be if we was in the middle ages, you use that to fucking ransack the kingdom and kill the king and queen and they family. You know what I'm saying like, nah, son, mm -hmm. that, that type of shit is like, is, is, is a certain place in hell for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Cause it's like a man's word. That's all he's got. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. all you got. So if I say I'm going to do something for you, I'm going to do it. Now, mm -hmm. if I can't do it, I'm going to come to you and be like, yo, bro, I know I said I could do this, but yo, my bad. I thought I could but I can't, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? 
And that's still honorable. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't hit nobody with the front like, yo, I got you. And then you turn around, you don't got them because they're relying on you. Because now mm -hmm. your your face card is, is you know what I'm saying? It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be depleted because now people are gonna know, like, yo, we can't, we can't deal with you. Like, yeah, there used to be a time, Ron Jack, you're right. There used to be a time where you shake on it, and that was it. Mm -hmm. What what uh <laughs> what they say in um in um oh, what's the movie? Uh uh, any given Sunday, he's like, yo, me and your dad, anytime we had contract time, we had a beer and we shake on it. Uh, oh, beer? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, this man shit. Like, what he said, what went. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I ain't have to have no contract. And we ain't have to have write this down on paper because we wasn't thinking on some aspect like, yo, this, this nigga might snake me later on. So I got to yeah. write in the contract the stipulations of what we spoke about. Ah, uh ah, -uh, because we don't trust each other. Nah, we men. I can trust you. You say you're going to do this. Then I, I'm going to say I do that. We shake on it. And that's what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But we live in a world now. It's like, like you were talking about in, um, in time to rap. Shorty trying to off motherfuckers because they had a bad review. <laughs> right. we, had a, we, had a, we had a business deal. You reneged on the business or you didn't come through with the business. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what else do I got but to say that your business is whack? But to add, on, to add on to what you're saying, like your word is everything. Like, you know, I when 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 a when a man says, I won't break my word for nobody. You know, all I got is my word and my balls. Pause. But same, you know, they break them all the time. So right. word becomes goofy when you don't keep your word. You're not going to get the same energy as that you would have got, even if somebody is not in need. And I think I'm that type of friend, even even if you're not dependent on me for something. It's just something that I said I was going to do. I'm going to do it. Like, it was funny. I remember for your birthday last year, it was funny. I told you I was going to come up for your birthday, right? Come down to Miami, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And the lady that you were seeing at the time. She was like, yo, is your brother actually going to come? Like, he's coming from, you know, all the way from Orlando. Like, and you was like, yo, he coming, man. <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> my brother, like, if he say he going to come, he going to come. Pause. Like, you know what I'm saying? And lo and behold, what happened? All my, all my peoples came. Yeah. You sitting there by yourself on your lonesome. Right, right, Look, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, all my right. peoples came through. Where your peoples at? right. You looking crazy because we we taking our time to get to the spot because I'm thinking she with her homegirl. Right, and we were and not we, necessarily taking our time. It was just it was just bad, you know, what I'm bad saying? shit going on. Yeah, and then when we finally get there. I'm like, yo, why you sitting here by yourself? Wait, oh, they didn't come through. I'm like, hmm, sucks to have your friends, but my right. people, all my peoples came through. You know what I'm saying? Right. My bro, my day one came through. All my coworkers came through, and you just sitting there by yourself looking salty. <laughs> but we still had a bomb time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a bomb time. Right. But is it again going back to what we're saying is keeping our word, doing what we say we're gonna do, regardless if you need somebody, you don't have to need somebody or be needed to do what you say you're gonna do. Just do what you say you're gonna do. Because at, especially for men, our word has to be everything. Our word has to, just like how you just said, yo. At some point, you're not able to do something. Say that. Say that. Like one of my other bros, his birthday was yesterday. And he was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I'm having a birthday party or, or a little get together, like pull up. And I wasn't able to go. But any of, any of his past birthdays, I went to because I was able to go. And I, I called him straight up when he sent me the invite. Yo, I'm not going to be able to pull up. I got to, you know what I'm saying? I got mad stuff I got to take care of. And you, he's like an hour and a half away. and I won't have the flexibility to do what I need to do to come, you know what I'm saying? Party with you, bust it up, bring in your birthday, and then get back in time to finish doing what I have to do mm -hmm. um, this year. You know what I'm saying? So keeping my word, whether am I, if I can or I can't, he don't need me there. You see what I'm saying? But he would have liked if I would have pulled up, paused, but you know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't make it. So Keeping your word is everything. So, uh, petty law term, integrity, integrity, thing to I man. Got you.
I got the uh, the two words you put down, um, Rowan Jack, arbitration and integrity. I got you for next episode, kid. That's I'm gonna keep my word on it. Keep your word. Yeah, just because we want to keep the lie live segment, don't mean I ain't gonna do what I say I'm gonna do. You heard? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> keep the lie live. You heard? Nah, that's, that's a it. fact. I got you. Those are two good words, so I'm gonna look them up. But again, you know what I'm saying? Like I was saying before, uh, I had the sixth edition and I couldn't find that last word you gave me, which had me tight. And it was like, damn, I thought I had a good edition. So mm -hmm. now I got to get an earlier one. You know what I'm saying? So those certain words I couldn't find before, I could have sworn I was able to find that word you had gave me last episode, but couldn't find it. So now we got to go in between. Again, I'm trying to tell you, it's mad hard to get the first edition. It's it's damn near impossible. Like they, if, if you find they're gonna ask for like 300, 400 for that. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I was able to get get the sixth edition, but might need the fourth or the third one. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna look up see if I could get the fourth or third edition of the Black's Law Dictionary. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. So yeah, like, just keeping being in uh. Keeping your word in this time and this day and day age, it's like it's a rare it's a rare breed, but that's how you stand out because that's how real people uh, operate. And having a, a real core group of friends that you can uh, confide in and really be yourself and just really open up to, because men we need that we need that 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 space where we could be ourselves. At one point in time, when we was growing up. I thought it was the barbershop. Now, no more. You know what I'm saying? We can't even go in and talk our shit like we can because there's other people there now. You know what I'm saying? So I, I seen something from a show. I, I don't know if it was from a show. It was from a show where this girl was getting her hair cut and the dude was coming in. He was like, yo, I had this freak over last night. And you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then she was like, yo, so you ain't going to say nothing. And he was like, yeah. So I skied it. I skied all over the bitch, right? <laughs> So she like, yo, she like, yo, check your boy. He was like, yo, but come on, man. He was like, anyway. So, so she, he like, he's like, so you ain't gonna check your boy? He like, yo, you fam, but he's family. Like, you know what I'm saying? So she get up with the Zeke joint in the middle, trying to interrupt man talk. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, you in a man spot. You, you, you just got, just sit down, finish your cut, and just walk up out of there. You know what I'm saying? That's like me going to the hair, hair salon where I'm getting my retwist, and it's a whole slew of women talking shit about men. Mm -hmm. And I'm in there like, all right, you won't have to chill on the brothers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm only here, I'm the only one here to defend us. <laughs> Yo, <get laughs> so I mean, we need another man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, I'm saying, but I'm walking in a female space, but I'm expecting that, and it's cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If y'all ask my opinion, I'm going to give it, but y'all talking shit about men, y'all talking shit about men. Y'all ain't talking shit about me, so I'm going to be good. Right. So, you but know. it's a woman being emotional, and he talking about a random bitch. You act like he talking about your mother or something. Right, it's right. It's a random chick that you have no connection to, but you feel as though you have to... Uh, they have to respect your space. But you in our space. This right. is how men talk. Are you good? That's why he had to check you like, yo, you fam, but he family. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> just be cool how you be cool. Let me finish zeke you up. You know what I'm hit saying? Hit you with the lineup, and then we you, you get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? So, let's finish the, he say, so she said there with the, I just got skeeted on the face look. Because, <laughs> yo, because real talk, when you're in the barbershop, and and. And if you see ladies, if you see a group of men in a barbershop and you and you can see it from the outside, from the outside looking in, you know they in there laughing, cracking, they talking. You gotta know something's up when you walk in and it just gets quiet. You gotta know something's up because we in there really chopping it up. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then we find ourselves trying to be respectful and not talking about it around y'all or whatever because. It's like just being a gentleman about the situation. But at some point, get your ass up and leave so we can get back to the conversation. In fact, don't let them see you being happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's they like come in and ruin, They want to come in and ruin the moment. Like, yo, chill, son. Like, yo, that's just 
Just be cool. Like women seeing a group of men happy is like kryptonite. They like y'all. They gotta go in there and fuck it all up. Yeah. You act like niggas is running in the 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 um the hair salon while y'all talking y'all shit about us, and we gonna come in there and fuck it up because you happy. No, that's no space. Go over there because you're not up under me. So I'm gonna take that time to to be free of your ass. You know what I'm saying? And enjoy that space and that time that I'm not around you. I've seen a couple of skits, and you know this is very true. When a woman goes out and right before she leaves, she's like, hey, babe, I'm going out. Most of us, as our response is, okay, have a good time. Be safe. Because we don't, we, don't, we don't give up. We don't care. Go out. Have fun. Right. Let, let us. And then, mind you, she got on the, she got on the I'm in a relationship fit. But you can still see the body. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I'm in a relationship, though. Cool, right? But let us go out. Yo, we're about to go out. Kevin Hart did this uh, one thing that was pretty funny. He was like, yo, I'm about to go out, babe. All right, where you going? I don't know. What you going to eat? I don't know. Like, we're going to figure out what we like what we meet up. Like, because men, we will say, yo, let's meet at Buffalo Wild Wings. We'll get to Buffalo Wild Wings. And go somewhere else. Facts. We'll definitely do that. Or we'll meet up at one of our boys' crib and then go to the functions of where we going. So we don't mm-hmm. know what, what we're doing, what we eating. We don't know. Like, nah. we're we going to figure it out. Figure that, all that shit out, son. You know what I'm saying? But when we say we're about to go out, they, it's a whole issue. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's very funny. Women... Hate to see a group of men happy. It's very true. As soon as I get relaxed in my chair at at the house, my wife has the camera looking at my chair that that blinks on. <laughs> She's you like, know. yo, you only she only wants you to sit down yet. That's when she got a, a need for you to go grab something for her in the kitchen. Uh, you know what I'm saying? She don't even yeah. want you to sit down yet. It's like, yo, son, come on. Can a nigga just be happy? And they be mad that we be happy at the simplest shit, son. Yes. The yes. simplest shit. Niggas could go to a football game. Don't go to a football game with your wifey. Like, don't do it, son. I did it before, and I, I missed the rest of the game because it wasn't <laughs> entertaining for her. But I was having a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, well, it's halftime now. You ready to go? I'm like, bitch, we still got two more quarters left. What you mean? Yeah. We ain't going nowhere. Be cool like right, you be. All right, man. We could go. Man. I'm like, damn, it's a good game right now, son. I'm like, not gonna I'm not gonna lie though. I took my ex to a Michigan versus Florida State game and she got excited. I I I'm I, I will say that. That's the but that's the only woman that I went to a game and she, but she, she she don't. She don't under. She's never been to a college game, and then she's seeing all these Florida State fans, and then all the Michigan fans. This is. We, this is one. This was. A, we was in Miami at the Miami. Um, at the Miami Jones. The uh, what's that stadium called where the Dolphins play? Uh, oh, um, the Hard Jones. Rock. Hard Rock, right? So we at the Hard Rock. She's seeing all the Mich- She didn't realize like. On Michigan, when we play, like we travel, you know what I'm saying? So the yeah, whole Michigan come through, we come through. So people got on Michigan suits. See, like, damn, this mad school spirit around here. Like, this is this is. <laughs> I say, yo, like, this is my squad. Like, we get in poppy. So of course, it's it's a New Year's game. It's a bowl game. Um, I think it was like the Orange Bowl or something like that. And we got good seats. You know what I'm saying? We sit in front row. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You know what I'm saying? So she like, oh, like, this is popping. Like, she better, you know what I'm saying? This, this is an $800 seat here. You know what I'm saying? So she, I'm not going to lie. That particular woman had a good time because of the the game. The ambiance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the noise of the crowd. Like, if you watch the game at that Hot Rock Cafe, when it gets loud, it gets it's a beautiful sound when somebody's like running a touchdown and you hit, ah, like it just it just sounds crazy. And that game went down like to the last. You know what I'm saying? It was one of them games, bro. So uh, this is when they had Dalvin Cook on Florida State. Michigan had Jabril Peppers and mm. 
like the year when Michigan had like 17 first round picks. Like it was just litty titty, bro. It was popping. So that's the one woman that went to that one game that she enjoyed. Every other game, you're exactly right, bro. Just uh, like, yo, if you don't shut that. Just, <laughs> just be cool like you be cool. So right. that's a nigga like me. I get hyped because we in Florida. The Florida high school games is fire. Popping. Like, Popping. Popping. Like, I'm talking about these cats, these young cats is hella skilled. So, so you go, you turn your head, you done miss the ill play, son. Mm -hmm. You done umbop like three niggas, uh, spin off another one, truck two more niggas. You know what I'm saying? And it just be the oh, games be too lit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fact. Be too lit, son. Similars are getting their reparations. That's a, hey, man. Excuse me, that's a fact. That's a fact, Rowan. That's a oh, yeah. fact. Oh, yeah, they got that whole area. <clears throat> they got that whole area locked down as far as, like, with the Hard Rock Cafe and all that, where they got their own police and all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you drive through that main road, you see their tribal police over there. Mm -hmm. Don't get pulled over by them. I, I mm -hmm. want to know what happens because I follow the law, so I don't get pulled over. So I wouldn't want to know what happens if you get pulled over by them. You know what I'm saying? So Like, you be cool. Yeah, I'd be cool how I'd be cool. I've been down here for like eight years. I ain't never got pulled over. So, you know what I'm saying? I follow mm -hmm. the law and shit, so. Mm-hmm. I'm from Lake City, Florida. Oh, that's what's up, man. Columbia County Tigers was my high school. Seminoles. Yeah, that's a, that's what's up, man. The, the high school games I used to go to was in Melbourne. Uh, Palm Bay High School. Dead, dead, man. The whole town, Friday nights crazy thursday night friday night popping so you know some call i got um miami northwestern right over here you know um mm -hmm. the bulls uh, the teddy bridgewater is now the head coach of miami northwestern mm -hmm. so these, these, the, yo these games coming up this this fall season is gonna be crazy miami I central got some some six seven quarterback coming back Yo, this dude is a monster. I can't wait to see them games. Miami Central got some top tier quarterback. He like six three, six seven. North uh Miramar High School got a fucking phenomenal quarterback uh for the senior season. And they did all right, son. So mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't been to a couple of fire games because of my job and shit. So I just hope they open up a studio in Miami so now I can see the Miami games like Miami Norland, uh Booker T. Washington, uh North My uh uh, Miami Central, uh, North uh, Northwestern. I love to see them games because them shits is litty titty. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Uh, never been to Gainesville after the Seminoles run. Yeah, I've been to Gainesville. Um, Gainesville is is different. They they got like a hundred and eighty million dollar facility, which is crazy. I love to see a, a, a fucking Florida a Florida game. Yeah, just the facility is crazy. Um, but my but my ultimate my ultimate game that I must go to is a Michigan game in Ann Arbor. Yes, for me to travel to Detroit, go to Ann Arbor, go to one of the Michigan games at home in the big house where they hold over 120 people. My my crazy ass. Pauls is going to be one of the crowd rocking my maze and, and Navy shirt uh, one day. I'm going to go to one of them games probably this year or next year. I'm going to go to one of the Michigan games, definitely. Uh, anything you want to touch on before we get out of here, Pauls? He says it's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> Just get one of them bubble gooses. You be yeah. right, you know what I'm saying? You be, you be cool, you know what I'm saying? You be all right. Oh, nah, this was a Again, a dope episode. Um, shout out to the chat. Y'all been live. Y'all been active. Y'all been cracking hella jokes. Um, you know what I'm saying? I feel as though we got the best live in the nation. You know what I'm saying? We got the best live chat in the nation. I don't care what nobody tell me. Y'all uh, make this um, this journey and this uh, interaction that much better. Um uh, Shit, we do it for y'all, son. Cause me and my bro, we talk on this shit all the time. So mm -hmm. it's glad to see more people uh being interactive, stop being ghosts out here, introduce yourselves, don't be shy. We you know what I'm saying we cool like that. So 
We got another episode for you on Thursday. So tap in once again. And you know what I'm saying? We're just going to have some lit shit. So tomorrow's April. Oh, we in April 1st now. So I'm wanting to see how this whole week going to turn out. Because last week was wow. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be a whole new week of whole new fuckery. So I'm, I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Before we get out of here, I must touch on what do you think of, because everybody's talking about it, the Kendrick Lamar diss against Drake and J. Cole. I'm all for it. You know what I'm saying? I'm all for it because we need that type of competition because I feel as though people getting watered down and being all friends and all this other goofy shit. <clears throat> Me and you, we don't come from that era of like rappers being friends. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Oh, I'm the greatest of rapper. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to show you why I'm the greatest. And, and this dude, the, it was always competitive. You know what I'm saying? When we were growing up in the 90s, we had too many lit motherfuckers all going for the crown. And that's what I like. So that competitive uh, nature, bring the best out of these artists to to get their pen game up. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's too buddy-buddy. I don't really like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, get, like that's what that's what... Then, then we get a watered down product. You know what I'm saying? So when the competition is up, I feel it makes the the product that much better. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. As long as just competitive competition, and not no street joint. You know what I'm saying? We, we are artists. It's all about the art. So make it better. So me as a consumer, I enjoy it more. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I would love to hear a, a great response from either Kendrick. I mean, either from J. Cole or Drake. And hopefully it'd be competitive so it could keep going on into the summer. You know what I'm saying? But it was a fire joint. Uh, I fuck with it. Drake and J. Cole are the top tier rappers of this era. And based on their success, you would say that. But I don't think. Outside of J. Cole, I don't think they're the top three lyrically outside of J. Cole. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's why I want to see I want to res, I want to see a response. I, I like Kendrick. I think Kendrick is dope, but Kendrick don't strike fear to me in, in his pen game. Drake don't sh- strike fear to me in his pen game. J. Cole? It's, it's respect. I respect this pen game. It's like I ain't afraid of nothing, but that's Pookie from Richmond. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look at J. Cole. It's like, yo, that's J. Cole from North Carolina. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His pin game is is top tier series. I will say that. It's top tier. He, J. Cole is up there like that. He's like that, that lyrically. Um, the other two guys, like I said, uh, Kendrick, Drake, very, very respectable perspective of their music and the lyrics that they put out drake bodied every drake drake bodied everybody that he's going against in um in a a a battle as far as like a lyrical battle he's bodied everybody everybody's everybody anybody that's battling he's bodied so i respect this pin game but it doesn't strike fit j cole pin game is is top tip but it does it don't strike strike no fit so I got a verse for everybody. I got a verse for everybody. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the song out soon, but I'd rather it be a whole single instead of like a just a just a verse that I'm putting out. I'm gonna put some energy behind it. You know what I'm saying? Just to give that competitive nature. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just competitive nature. Like that, you know, because they need they need to get this work. And and that's just me being competitive. Like I, I can't tell the rest of the world, yo, I'm doper than this and that. I just got to do the work and let the world decide. You know what I'm saying? So let them, let them. I, I love to see it. Let them continue to do what they do. I'm gonna do what I do. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna in, inject myself as well, and uh, and I hope they keep going back and forth. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even even uh even uh Big Sean is is someone in this as well too. He was mentioned uh, in 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 something as well. So I mean, man, just be competitive, have fun. Like you said, keep it all keep it all on wax because they shouldn't be turned into beef. This is just be about competitive nature. Who's the best and who 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 pin is the sharpest? So you know, I love it as well. Uh, 
any rapper in the dress, don't do it for me. Hey, man, I feel you. <laughs> I, but there's one rapper that wore a dress that I'm not going to front. I enjoy their music, but they're not a lyricist to me. And, and you know, we all know who, who who's worn a dress. I mean, damn, do we? Because there's quite a few rappers that wore dresses now. Yeah, I, well, the, the the artist I'm talking about is Young Thug. Is Young Thug? I like I like his music, um, but he's not a lyricist. But he has dope music though. He, he got straight bops. All right, y'all. So yo, that's been a wrap for episode forty four. Episode forty four again. Y'all hit the community page on the page on the um channel. It's fun, interactive questions from popular opinion. You know, put in put in your answers and 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 join the uh the the community page uh again for popular opinions as well. Watch the rewatches. We got plenty of shorts. We got plenty of videos, and of course our lives. We, we got a lot of episodes up. Uh, uh, again, you see us on Thursday at ten thirty. Shout out to our sponsors of the show: Button Snaps, OUV Records. And Bravo section. If you're interested in becoming one of the sponsors of the show, you can hit me up on Instagram at Ashley Lovechild, or you can hit my brother up on his Instagram at as Bravo section underscore. Holla at me there. You know what I'm saying? Bravo section underscore. Again, if you have serious inquiry on becoming one of the sponsors of the show, if you have product or anything that you're trying to promote that is positive, hit us up. All right, make sure y'all tap into my brand new music that's up on all music platforms at Ashley Love Child. And yo, it's been another dope one. We're gonna see y'all right, Thursday, baby. 10 30. As always, love. See y'all yes, later. Holla.